What's up, guys? It's your boy Omnisensei back with part 8 of Reborn in Naruto OC broadcasts the future to the shinobi world. If you enjoy my content, consider buying me a coffee link in the description. Like the video, share, and subscribe. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Why did the rain in Omegakur stop? Thousands of meters outside Omegakur, Namaka's Minato and his team looked at the quiet Omegakur, which seemed a little weird, and wondered. It seems that Omegakur is confident in its own defense. Namaka's Minato's voice sounded with a bit of lament. In Omegakur, just about everyone had the words ready for an ambush written in their heads. I'll go and see. Senju Taburama looked at Omegakur with dignified eyes and cautiously approached Omegakur. He didn't care about the other people in Omegakur. After all, he thought that although the people in Akatsuki were strong, they wouldn't be able to catch up with him. But Ichiha Madara was probably in Omegakur. This made him extremely cautious. Madara is too strong. He's so strong, he was hardly human. To be honest, apart from his own brother, Taburama had never really seen anyone else in the shinobi world who was a match for Madara. Senju Taburama approached Omegakur carefully. They were already here, even if this trip wasn't successful. They still had to find some information about Akatsuki. Behind him, Namaka's Minato and Hadaka Kashi nervously looked at Senju Taburama, who was constantly walking towards Omegakur. Their expressions were filled with awe. What they didn't know was that, although Nagato had dispersed the Rainmaker Jutsu, the trio's whereabouts were detected by the village's sensory shinobi, as soon as they made their appearance. The current Omegakur had more than Yuzumaki Nagato as their sensor-type shinobi. There was also Yuzumaki Kashina and Yuzumaki Karen, who had amazing perception abilities. The three people who came to invade simply wouldn't have thought that the location where they were now or the location where the battle was going to take place next had been located in advance. Well done Karen. Yuzumaki Nagato praised her, not seeing Karen's instantly blushing face. He held out his hand, and immediately a group of Akatsuki members in red cloud robes moved from behind him. Although he believed in Kashina and the Ichiha clan's strength, not to mention, Kashina, it could be said that this was the first encounter between Akatsuki and the five major shinobi villages, which had an extraordinary significance for Akatsuki. This. This was equivalent to the first shot in the shinobi world reform war. Therefore, Yuzumaki Nagato demanded that this battle be not only won, but thoroughly won. Even more, winning beautifully. Surprised by the suspicious sound, Senju Taburama's advancing footsteps suddenly stopped. The closer he got to Omegakur, the worse he felt. It felt like he was falling into someone else's ambush, step by step. Taburama's expression grew even more serious. At last, he directly leaned over, his two fingers were formed into a sword-shaped seal, and he lightly touched the ground. At the moment, he had opened his perception ability to the maximum. The nearest chakra fluctuation in his perception was in the middle of Omegakur. In other words, in his perception, all the shinobi were in Omegakur. But what was this feeling of being watched by many people? Senju Taburama's expression slightly sank. He didn't know what this feeling in his heart was. After all, he didn't see anyone or any ambush right now. But for Senju Taburama, this intuition had helped him survive on the battlefield plenty of times. Therefore, he trusted his instincts. No, retreat. Almost instantly, Senju Taburama made a choice. His body changed direction and ran at a faster pace than he had when he came. Oh no, Patriarch, he's running. An Ichiha clan member hiding in the boundary watched Senju Taburama turn and run away. He was startled and hastily spoke to Ichiha Fugaku behind him. Run. Humph, can he run? Ichiha Fugaku snorted coldly. His cold voice suddenly said, follow me. As Ichiha Fugaku's words fell, above their heads, the special boundary that could hide their forms suddenly disappeared, and dozens of people were revealed. Sure enough, there's an ambush. Seeing Ichiha Fugaku's group not far behind, Senju Taburama's eyes narrowed. If he hadn't turned just now, he would already be in the opponent's encirclement. Five release. Great fireball technique. Five release. Phoenix flower jutsu. Wind release. Wind scythe technique. The voice coming from in front of him made Senju Taburama's expression change. 
Looking up, he saw that somehow, a group of Ichiha people had already appeared in front of him. At this moment, this group of Ichiha people was looking at him with a smile, just like how a wolf would look at a small white rabbit. They quickly formed seals with their hands, and in the next moment, fire release and wind release jutsu came crashing down on him all at once. Obviously, they were two kinds of jutsu. Under the joint attack of the Ichiha clansmen, not only did it not weaken or disappear, but their jutsu seemed to combine. Looking at the jutsu in front of him, Senju Taburama's expression remained unchanged. He raised his hands and formed seals. What a release. What a formation wall. When the seals were completed, Senju Taburama's cheeks puffed out, and a violent stream of water spewed out of his mouth, forming a water wall that surrounded him. Unlike other shinobi's water formation wall technique, the water wall spat out by Senju Taburama could actually rotate. The water revolved around Senju Taburama, and in the blink of an eye, it formed a foolproof defense without any openings. SHHHHH when the water and fire collided, it immediately rang out with harsh piercing sounds. Senju Taburama went through the many attacks unscathed, landed on the ground, and was about to break through when he was struck by a sudden shock. He didn't know when, but hundreds of people from the Ichiha clan had surrounded him in three layers. This turned his expression even more ugly. After these people held him back, Ichiha Fugaku had caught up with Ichiha's high-end combat force. Swish. Fugaku and the Ichiha clansmen landed directly in the middle of the encirclement. Looking at Senju Taburama, who was surrounded in the center, the corners of their mouths picked up at the same time. Their manjakyos slowly rotated and turned into eternal manjakyos. Ichiha Fugaku took a step towards Senju Taburama. Kano has second hokage, you are called Senju Taburama, right? Ichiha Fugaku's slightly mocking voice rang out. As he continued to move closer to Taburama, a chakra form appeared on him all of a sudden. Bones, flesh and blood, armor and weapons. In the blink of an eye, a two-meter tall dark Susanu directly appeared in front of Senju Taburama. Seeing Fugaku's movement behind him, those clansmen who had Manjakyo were raising their right hands at the same time, and waved the others back. Instantly, the Ichiha group withdrew backwards simultaneously, widening the encirclement to several times, leaving enough ground for him. At the same time, Ichiha Fugaku's voice rang out again, directly causing the numerous Ichiha to feel excited. Who gave you the right to decide if my Ichiha is righteous enough to live? Are you worthy? With a low roar, Ichiha Fugaku rushed towards Senju Taburama with his Susanoo blade instantly unsheathed in his hand. Black Flame. Senju Taburama was shocked to see that the flame burning on Ichiha Fugaku's Susanoo blade was black. This bizarre technique of his opponent gave him a strange feeling. He felt that if his arm were cut off by his opponent's sword, which was covered with black flame, he wouldn't recover even if he was in his impure world reincarnated form. Senju Taburama didn't know why he felt this way, but he didn't want to test it out. Both his hands formed seals, and a large amount of water took shape in his hands. In the blink of an eye, it formed a water vortex. He continuously compressed the vortex and finally placed it in his right palm. From a distance, his hands seemed to be holding a high-speed rotating water javelin. In the distance, Ichiha Midar, who was watching the battle, looked at Ichiha Fugaku and Senju Taburama, who were fighting each other, with a disdainful expression on his face. In his opinion, these two people weren't as good at fighting as two five-year-olds. They were pecking at each other like chickens. What surprised him was that Ichiha Fugaku was able to shrink the full-bodied Susanoo. Making Susanoo smaller, just like Madar. After all, he could control both the 800-meter-tall full-bodied Susanoo and the 80-meter-tall ordinary Susanoo. But shrinking it to such a small size and still being able to cast the full body, one could imagine how much control over the eye technique was needed. Could it be that this is his ability? It seems that his pair of eternal manjakyo is pretty unique. Looking at Ichiha Fugaku, who was dodging Senju Taburama in the middle of the field, Ichiha Midara suddenly felt a slight interest in him. Is it the Ichiha clan? In the distance, Namika's Minato looked at the battle in surprise. When he died, the Ichiha clan wasn't extinct yet, and Fugaku was still his friend, so he wasn't surprised by the resurrection of the Ichiha clan. Even now, he was only surprised by Ichiha Fugaku's eye technique. What an amazing technique, it can be attached to the body like armor. Namika's Minato's eyes were full of awe. This was the first time he saw the full-bodied Susanoo. Is this the ultimate essence of the Ichiha clan's eye technique? Is it nice? The crisp voice suddenly sounded from behind Namika's Minato, which surprised Namika's Minato. 
Without any discussion at all, Namika's Minato and Hataka Kashi directly split in two directions and spread out. After a few tens of meters of distance, Namika's Minato turned back. With just one glance, Namika's Minato instantly fell into a daze. Kashina. Namika's Minato looked at Kashina in disbelief, full of astonishment. No, it's impossible. How could you be resurrected? Seeing Kashina's chapped body, which was exactly like his own, Namika's Minato's face instantly turned cold. How dare Akatsuki control you? Heavy killing intent appeared in him, and Namika's Minato's hand slowly clenched. He didn't expect that Akatsuki would be so unscrupulous. How dare they resurrect Kashina with impure world reincarnation? Yuzumaki Kashina. On the other hand, Hadaka Kakashi, who had just landed, was shocked to see Kashina. Unlike Minato's shock, Kakashi was shocked by how the other party approached him so quietly just now. Maybe, we were found out long ago. They had been lying in wait here. Hadaka Kakashi's heart moved, quietly looking at the surrounding terrain. What? You aren't even calling me with honorifics anymore. Yuzumaki Kashina sneered and turned her head to Hadaka Kakashi. For Kakashi, her anger was second only to Abido's, and even, she had more anger towards Namika's Minato. You two, go and beat him for me. With Kashina's voice falling, Shukaku and Kurama, who had been lying obediently on her shoulders, suddenly felt a hand gripping their tails, and then they were thrown at Hadaka Kakashi. His Manjaku Shuringen's jutsu has a duration. You guys just keep bombing him with tail beast balls. That was the Kayubi and the Ichibi. Seeing the two things thrown by Yuzumaki Kashina, Hada Kakashi's soul almost flew away. He never dreamed that Yuzumaki Kashina's attack would be this. Almost without hesitation, Hada Kakashi turned around and ran. Hey, Kurama, shall we chase him? In midair, looking at the fleeing Kakashi, Shukaku's eyes flashed with a glint of light. Just before he continued to speak, he heard Kurama's cold voice. Idiot, look up at the sky. Being scolded by Kurama as an idiot was a rare occasion where Shikaku didn't get angry. The pair of small eyes looked above him, and for an instant, several red cloud robes caught his eyes. This is. Damn it. How dare they look down on us. These Akatsuki people are too detestable. Seeing those people's identities, Shikaku instantly burst into a rage. Roar. With a roar, Shikaku's body grew with the wind, and in the blink of an eye, it had taken on its original form. His mouth was wide open, and a horrible chakra instantly condensed in front of his mouth, forming a sand-colored tail beast ball. Immediately after, Shikaku's short neck swung and slammed the tail beast ball directly at Kakashi. Damn it. Feeling the horrible chakra from behind, Kakashi's expression suddenly changed. There was no way to block an attack of this magnitude by himself. Kamui. With no time to think, had a Kakashi instantly used his Manjekyo eye technique. Just as his body faded, Shukaku's tailed beast ball flew through his body and proceeded to blast into the ground. Boom the deafening explosion sounded, and a mushroom cloud was instantly generated. Hada Kakashi looked at the slowly subsiding explosion, and was just about to release Kamui when in the next moment, an orange tailed beast ball blasted at his feet. Boom the tailed beast ball exploded again, and another mushroom cloud rose. This time, the tailed beast ball was more powerful than the last one, directly blowing the ground into a hundred meter deep crater. Hm. Shikaku's eyes slightly narrowed, looking at the traces made by Kurama's tailed beast ball, and then at his own. Damn fox, you want to challenge me? Shukaku glanced at Kurama and saw that Kurama was preparing for a second tailed beast ball. The tanuki's face suddenly turned dark. A bastard fox is always a bastard fox. How dare you use that method to prove that you're better than me? Damn it. At this point, Shukaku's whole chakra converged on his mouth. After thinking a bit, he withdrew part of it. He was going to return the favor, just a little bit stronger than the attack Kayubi just made. Boom. Shukaku's second tailed beast ball was directly blown out when it was condensed. Sure enough, as he expected, the damage cause was just a little stronger than the first one the Kayubi made. <laughs> Seeing Shukaku's meaning, Kurama's eyes slightly narrowed, and he looked at Shukaku menacingly. Immediately after boom. 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 Kakashi. Damn it aside, Namika's Minato looking at those two terrifying tailed beasts, his expression changed. He didn't know how long Hada Kakashi could last, but obviously, he wouldn't last as long as those two tailed beasts. Kashina must be defeated and sealed quickly, he had to support Kakashi. Thinking of this, Namika's Minato's face straightened up. Then, a swirling spiral ball appeared in his hand. Want to seal me after breaking me with Rasengan? 
Uzumaki Kashina knew everything about Namika's Minato. Whether its size or length, she knew it like the back of her hand. At this moment, seeing Namika's Minato's preparation movements, she directly said what Namika's Minato was thinking. Adamantine sealing chains. Forming seals, with a soft cry from Uzumaki Kashina, several crimson chakra chains burst out from her back. Seeing Kashina's actions, Namika's Minato's expression instantly froze. He suddenly found that things might not be as simple as he thought. Minato. If you do not fight with all your might, you'll be sealed by me. Yuzumaki Kashina's sarcastic voice sounded. Her feet moved lightly as she walked towards Namika's Minato step by step. Feeling the familiar sense of oppression from Kashina, Namika's Minato's face had turned incomparably gloomy. He knew that Kashina was right. With her mastery and sealing techniques, he would most likely be sealed if he didn't go all out. But he didn't want to beat her. Damn it. Namika's Minato let out a low roar, seemingly unable to suppress the anger in his heart. His voice contained anger that couldn't be concealed. Kashina, tell me where the enemy who is controlling you is. I'll go and kill him. Kashina, I told you I would protect you, mother and son. Although we are all dead now, Naruto is still alive. He's still in the hands of the enemy. I'll get him and shut up hearing Namika's Minato mention Naruto, Kashina instantly exploded. Protect us, mother and son ha. I was really blind when I married you. Today, I'm going to beat you up for my son. Boom. Yuzumaki Kashina stomped on the ground, and spiderweb-like cracks instantly appeared on the solid ground, spreading out in all directions. Yuzumaki Kashina used the powerful recoil force and shot towards Namika's Minato, who was stunned. In the battlefield of Ichihafugaku and Senju Taburama, Senju Taburama was dodging Ichihafugaku's slashes and stealing information from Ichihafugaku. With the Flying Thunder God technique, he could leave whenever he wanted. After all, as early as before their arrival, he had left the Flying Thunder God mark in Kanoha. Not only him, but also the fourth Hokage, had left the Flying Thunder God mark in Kanoha. Is this all you've got? Senju Taburama coldly looked at Ichihafugaku in front of him. Unlike Namika's Minato, he had seen the full-bodied Susanoo, but it was the first time he had seen one so small. Moreover, he was surprised to find that this Susanoo was attached to the body-like armor. Although its destructive ability and defensive ability were greatly weakened, on the contrary, its agility was greatly improved. Moreover, the other party could also directly wield Jutsu from inside the Susanoo. 5 Release. Bomb Blast Dance. Looking at Senju Taburama, who kept dodging, Ichihafugaku's expression was slightly cold. This was the first time for him to fight against the second Hokage. Unexpectedly, the other party's combat experience was so rich. The other party's combat reflexes were even able to crush his own completely. This Ichihafugaku's gaze slightly shifted. Shinobi of this level knew that he couldn't look directly at the Shuringen, so he couldn't find the opportunity to change the situation with his illusion technique. In this way, he could only maintain a slight advantage, and try to magnify it to the point where he could win. What a release. Severing wave. The powerful water line was shot from Senju Taburama's mouth, and instantly turned into a sharp blade of water, cutting through Ichihafugaku's fire release jutsu. What a release. Heavenly weeping. Senju Taburama continued to form seals and spat out countless fine water needles from his mouth. Because the attack of Heavenly Weeping was widespread, Senju Taburama's attack directly blanketed the Ichiha clan behind Fugaku as well. He wanted to test the strength of these Ichiha shinobi. Ha! Huh. Looking at the flying water needles, Ichiha Fugaku sneered. In his hand, the Susanoo blade whipped out, stopping all the water needles. Whoosh! The sound of the wind blowing in his ear caused Fugaku to freeze. The red glowing eyes looked away and immediately saw a strangely shaped kunai grazing past his own cyber. Seeing that it missed him, Ichihafugaku had just relaxed in his heart. In the next moment, he instantly reacted. Isn't this the fourth Hokage's flying thunder god kunai? In the next moment, Senju Taburama's figure had already appeared behind him. Maintaining a diving position, Senju Taburama stabbed the kunai in his hand at Ichihafugaku's back. Ding. The kunai came into contact with Fugaku's Susanoo, and the sound of iron colliding erupted. The blow failed, and Senju Taburama pulled away. In a flash, his figure had returned to its original place. At the same time, Fugaku's slash crossed the spot where Senju Taburama had just been but missed. Seeing his opponent's sudden surge in speed and knowing that he hadn't fought him at his full strength, Fugaku's face instantly went cold. He couldn't beat Ichihemadar, but he didn't believe he couldn't beat this guy. 
in a head-to-head -head fight, he still couldn't beat Senju Taburama. Just as Hugaku got serious, Senju Taburama finally got serious. The Chuha Fugaku Susanoo was much smaller, but his defense was still very strong. No more testing. These people were only the Ichiha clan. If the Akatsuki people gathered later, it wouldn't be so easy for him to leave. Glancing at the Ichiha crowd, Senju Taburama slowly formed seals. These inherently evil Ichiha people gave him a big gift. Senju Taburama glanced at the flying thunder god mark behind Ichiha Fugaku, and his lips slightly raised. This was what he had just left on Ichiha Fugaku during the attack. Senju Taburama's eyes fluctuated. He was now in the impure world reincarnated state, he could just use the jutsu that had been invented to go with the impure world reincarnation technique. Few people knew that the impure world reincarnation technique was originally a double suicide jutsu. The jutsu that combined with this was naturally swish. His figure instantly disappeared from its place, and Senju Taburama's body once again appeared behind Ichiha Fugaku. Ichiha Fugaku grunted coldly. This time, he was prepared. But to his surprise, this time, the other party didn't back off after a hit. Different from just now, Senju Taburama threw several kunai in all directions at the Ichiha crowd simultaneously. Immediately afterward, Senju Taburama's figure suddenly appeared amongst the Ichiha people and widely slashed. This is explosive tags. Tapped by Senju Taburama, the Ichiha clansmen looked at the explosive tags that appeared on them in horror, and everyone was in a state of shock. Be careful. He's sticking explosive tags. Wait, these don't seem to be ordinary explosive tags. Damn, we can't die. It's over, it's going to blow up. Everyone, stay away from me. Listening to the sounds of shock, a smile slowly emerged on Senju Taburama's face. This is no ordinary explosive tags, tandem explosive tags. Explode. At the moment when the tandem explosive tags technique was detonated, Senju Taburama was about to launch the flying thunder god technique, and disappeared from the explosion range. Still, to his dismay, he found that the flying thunder god technique had failed. No. It's not that the flying thunder god technique didn't work, but this space sealed. Senju Taburama looked around with horror. To his dismay, he found that, at this moment, a large blue shroud was enveloping them, in a hundred meter radius. Under Senju Taburama's shocked gaze, all the Shuringen of the Ichiha clan in the blue shroud began to turn, and immediately afterward, blue armor appeared on all of them. No. Not armor, but Susanoo armor. Each Susanoo was about three meters tall and had hands and feet. Although it wasn't as detailed as Ichiha Fugaku's body, its thickness was much stronger than Fugaku's Susanoo reduced version. What made Senju Taburama even more shocked was that these Susanoo actually isolated the explosive tags he put on the Ichiha crowd. Those explosive tags he summoned, after falling off, surprisingly disappeared. His technique failed. This is Susanoo impossible. They only have three Tomos, how did they summon the Susanoo? At this moment, seeing the changes in the field, not only Senju Taburama, but the Ichiha Shinobi were also confused. Ichiha Fugaku's eyebrows suddenly lifted as he saw everyone's Susanoo armor. This level of eye technique control, apart from himself, in the current Ichiha clan, only one person could do it. With that though, Ichiha Fugaku looked in a certain direction and saw a figure slowly walking over. Ichiha Fugaku's face suddenly looked complicated. It's him. Ichiha Madara. Not only Fugaku but the others also noticed Ichiha Madara entering the field. The blue armor was shimmering with streams of light, echoing the blue shroud over the heads of the crowd. Unlike the humble Susanoo on the Ichiha clansmen, Ichiha Madara's armor was complete with weapons, wings, facial features, and even scales on its armor. This is a new technique that I developed by using the reward and imitating the exam space. This technique is called Glory of Ichiha. Within the scope of this technique, all jutsu that require chakra to be activated, except for eye technique, will be invalidated. What do you think of its effects, Taburama? All jutsu will vanish. Senju Taburama froze, then a flash of clarity passed through his eyes. No wonder his tandem explosive tags and the flying thunder god technique couldn't be used. I never thought that you would be able to use the manjakyo eye technique to such an extent. With the Chihamidara around, he already knew his upcoming fate. Senju Taburama looked calm. He held a kunai in each hand, posing for battle. Come on, Ichiha Madara. Ichiha Madara shook his head disdainfully when he saw Senju Taburama look like he would rather die than surrender. He ignored the provocation of the former. If Hashirama was here, he still had the desire to fight. It was just Senju Taburama, and he wasn't worthy. 
The impure world reincarnation technique is here. They can also be restored. Ichiha Madara glanced at Ichiha Fugaku, who inexplicably said nothing and did nothing. Hearing Madara's reminder, Ichiha Fugaku slowly woke up. He took a deep look at Ichiha Madara. Honestly, he really didn't think that Ichiha Madara would take action just now. Having seen Conan's tandem explosive tags technique, Ichiha Fugaku knew how much harm it would do to the Ichiha clan, as Senju Tabarama really used the Jutsu if Ichiha Madara didn't make a move. And this siege against Senju Tabarama, the weakest of the Ichiha clan, was at the three Tamil level. These people were all the elites of the Ichiha clan. If he lost just one, Fugaku would feel heartache. Taking a deep breath, Ichiha Fugaku calmed his mood. Turning his head to look at Senju Tabarama, Ichiha Fugaku was no longer in the mood he had just been in. His physical skills are very powerful, you guys, be careful. Throwing down a light sentence, Ichiha Fugaku walked towards Ichiha Madara. He felt that he needed to have a good talk with Ichiha Madara. Damn it. Ichiha Madara, how dare you humiliate me like this. Looking at the Ichiha clansmen who kept gathering around, an angry look appeared on Senju Tabarama's face for the first time. As shinobi, especially a Kanoha shinobi, besides the interests of the village, what they cared most about was their reputation. If Ichiha Madara captured him, it wouldn't affect his reputation at all. After all, being captured by Ichiha Madara wasn't something shameful. However, if the Ichiha clansmen captured him, the majesty and image of the second Hokage would be severely affected. Humiliate. What humiliation? The Ichiha clansman was hit by Senju Tabarama's attack. If he didn't still have his Susanoo armor on, he would have died many times by now. Of course, this was also because he didn't use his Manjakyo Ai technique. He also knew that the two patriarchs wouldn't make any moves and left them to themselves, in order to improve everyone's combat skills. After all, there were few opponents of Senju Tabarama's caliber in the entire shinobi world. Haha, <laughs> Yudik, look at your wretched state. Let me do it. Another Ichiha clansman with Manjaku Shuringen stood out, laughing and blocking Senju Tabarama's attack. But soon, he was defeated. Then, someone took over the battle. With the ineffectiveness of Jutsu, coupled with the protection of Susanu, Senju Tabarama was now incapable of injuring or killing them. So, at the moment, Senju Tabarama had become their sparring partner. So, although they all failed, they didn't panic at all. Anyway, there was plenty of time. First, they would fight one by one. If they couldn't beat him, five at a time, then ten, then a hundred. They didn't believe that if everyone swarmed, they couldn't kill a guy who couldn't use Jutsu. Kashina, since you're not under control at all, why are you doing this? Namika's Minato looked at Kashina, who had an ugly expression on her face, and asked in disbelief. He didn't understand what Kashina was doing. Since she wasn't under someone's control, why would she help the enemy? Hearing Namika's Minato's words, Yuzumaki Kashina slowed down her attack. After several changes in her expression, she finally stopped attacking. She quietly looked at Namika's Minato. The several chakra chains danced behind her. Obviously, the momentum was extremely strong, but they gave Namika's Minato a feeling of weakness and helplessness. It's ridiculous. This body, I can't even cry if I want to. Yuzumaki Kashina's sad voice stunned Namika's Minato. Then he heard Kashina's self-deprecating laugh. Minato, do you know that when I was just resurrected, I heard about what happened to my son in Kanoha from Orochimaru, and my heart ached. I know, Kashina, I you don't know anything. Kashina's sudden outbreak surprised Namika's Minato. Before he could react, he heard Yuzumaki Kashina continue. In fact, you're right, we're all dead. We can't control anything in the shinobi world at all. Kashina, Naruto. Shut up. You talk too much. Kashina directly suppressed Namika's Minato's words. She had been resurrected for so long, but there were still some things she couldn't say to anyone. So, when she met Namika's Minato, even though she thought he was a bastard now. In fact, she surprisingly still had some thoughts about him. That's why she took over the mission of blocking Minato. If Yuzumaki Nagato was allowed to do it, Kashina was afraid that Minato would directly turn into a star in the sky. I'm not like you, someone who could give up his own son for the sake of the village. Seeing that Minato was about to speak again, Kashina's eyes glared, instantly causing Minato to wilt. You're the fourth Hokage, and I am the second generation Kayubi Jinchuriki. Have we not contributed enough to Konoha? Why did they treat Naruto like that? Treating Naruto like one of those shinobi war orphans. Yuzumaki Kashina's voice was a little hoarse, which was a sign of extreme anger. When I was alive, I was still Konoha's shinobi, but after I died, who cares? 
I'm not a shinobi now. I'm just Naruto's mother. Besides, if Naruto hadn't stopped me, I would have turned Konoha upside down. So, don't use the rules and bottom lines of the living to restrain me, a dead man. Looking at the furious Yuzumaki Kashina, Namika's Minato was suddenly reminded of the times when he was dominated by the red hot blooded habanero. The third may have his own concerns. Namika's Minato said stiffly. In fact, he himself didn't truly believe the words that came out of his mouth. A thing of the past, I don't care. Kashina waved her hand and said, I'm dead. If Naruto doesn't care about that, I don't either. I just want to follow Naruto now, see him get married and have children. If Naruto chooses to forgive Konoha, I will do the same. Likewise, if Naruto chooses to stay in Omegakur, I will support his choice. No. Naruto must not stay in Omegakur. Hearing Yuzumaki Kashina say such things, Namika's Minato instantly rebuffed. Seeing Namika's Minato's dramatic reaction, Kashina knew what he wanted to say. Suddenly, the corner of Kashina's lips was slightly raised. Well, then, you come with me to see Naruto and let him make his choice. Finally, Kashina added, if Naruto chooses to leave with you, I'll never stop it. Really? Namika's Minato looked at the familiar yet unfamiliar Yuzumaki Kashina with surprise, not expecting that things would take another turn like this. She actually wanted to take him to see Naruto. Looking at Kashina, who nodded, Namika's Minato's happy expression couldn't be concealed. He had decided that, as long as Naruto agreed, he would directly take him back to Konoha. Wait where's Kakashi? Namika's Minato suddenly realized that he hadn't heard a tailed beast ball explosion for some time now. Surely it doesn't mean that Namika's Minato's expression changed. He quickly looked but didn't see any figures at all. Not to mention Hata Kakashi, even those two tailed beasts were gone. Even the second Hokage, Senju Taburama, had disappeared. Don't look for them. You were the one who lasted the longest. Kashina scowled, turned around, and walked directly to Omegakur. She knew that Namika's Minato would follow her. Seeing Kashina's defenseless back, Namika's Minato's eyes flashed. Bending down, with a swish, flying thunder god Mark suddenly appeared on the ground under his feet. After everything was done, Minato looked at Kashina, who had gone far. His flicker technique was released, and in a flash, he chased after her. This this is. As Yuzumaki Kashina stepped into Omegakur, Namika's Minato was suddenly surprised. Brand new wooden houses lined up and appeared in front of him. With Minato's critical eyes, he could instantly see that these houses were all made purely with wood release. There are shinobi that could use wood release in Omegakur subconsciously, Namika's Minato felt that he had discovered Omegakur's great secret. Boom. Boom. A heavy sound interspersed with the sound of jutsu being performed sounded. Minato subconsciously looked over. With this look, he was once again astonished. Not far away, a group of shinobi was turning up the ground with earth release jutsu on the rugged field that had been affected by the battle. Then Ichibi's huge figure was constantly standing up, squatting, standing up again and squatting again. With his continuous efforts, suddenly, the soft ground became firm. That's not all. Behind the Ichibi, a girl in Akatsuki's robe was constantly spitting a pile of black things on the solid ground. Those things stuck to the ground and immediately solidified, and then the whole ground became extremely hard. Is this? Seeing the scenes in front of him, Namika's Minato was shocked. He began to wonder if he was crazy. The tailed beast helped Shinobi build roads. Repairing roads with bloodline limit ability. Namika's Minato looked around blankly. He thought there was something wrong with Akatsuki. As he looked to the side, as if there was a special attraction, a figure with a mini Kayubi on his head was instantly noticed by him. Naruto. The expression on Namika's Minato's face was momentarily stunned, and in the next moment, he suddenly felt a tightening grip on his hands. Kashina. Minato's voice rang out in disbelief as he looked at Kashina, who had suddenly sealed his hands. Don't worry. I'm just afraid you'll run. Kashina curled her lips and suddenly shouted to Naruto, Hinata, Naruto, calm down. Mom. Hearing Kashina's voice, Naruto was delighted. Everyone who went out to meet the enemy had already come back. He was worried about Kashina. Then, seeing the figure beside Kashina, Naruto suddenly froze. Swish. Naruto's body instantly appeared in front of Kashina, looking at Namika's Minato with some excitement and apprehension. Da dad. Naruto's hands were trembling, even his voice was slightly trembling. This was the first time he met Namika's Minato himself, but both the blonde hair on the other party's head and the special feeling from the other party, made Naruto instantly recognize him. 
Naruto's appearance made Minato somewhat confused, as he was the one that sealed the Kyubi inside Naruto. Once someone broke the seal, his clone would appear and stop it. Now that the Kyubi had come out and was on his head, how come Naruto was acting like he had never seen him? And behind Naruto, why were Hayuga Hinata's eyes so strange? Namika's Minato looked at Hayuga Hinata curiously. He had seen Hayuga Hinata's image on the report when he set out, so he knew what she looked like. Just like that, Namika's Minato didn't understand between Hayuga Hinata and Yuzumaki Naruto. Um feeling Minato's probing gaze, Hayuga Hinata's face turned red. Parents meeting both parents keeping her head down and letting her shoulder length hair completely block her face, Hayuga Hinata's head was filled with these words. Her eyes were firmly fixed on her toes, and her voice carried undisguised panic. Fourth Hokage Samahim. Namika's Minato looked back with a serious face, and was about to say something to Naruto when Kashina slapped him in the face. How do you talk to my daughter-in-law? Glancing at the shock Namika's Minato, Kashina looked back coldly. With flying thunder god, she couldn't teach him a lesson. Now that she had sealed his hands, she could beat him up as much as she wanted. Yuzumaki Kashina, leader Nagato asked me to invite you over. Arachimaru's voice sounded behind Kashina, and Kashina nodded. As it happens, she wasn't interested in the father-son bonding that followed, so she turned and left with Arachimaru. A few minutes later, they arrived at a house built with pure wood release jutsu. Kashina knew that this was the meeting hall of a Megakur. Originally, it was just a civilian area in Omegakur before Ichihamadara's invasion, but it was forcibly demolished because of Ichihamadara. Civilians all lived in a standard house built by Ichihamadara with wood release. So this one just happened to be converted into a meeting hall. Looking at the three-story building in front of her, even Yuzumaki Kashina had a flash of awe in her eyes. She really didn't know how Yuzumaki Nagato's head grew, letting a rare wood release shinobi do such low-end things. What she didn't understand most was that the proud Ichihem Madara heard Yuzumaki Nagato's suggestion, and instead of being annoyed, worked out many house models excitedly. Especially the small three-story home that was assigned to her, which she liked very much. Alas Yuzumaki Kashina sighed with mixed feelings and shook her head as she stepped into the meeting room with Arachimaru. She couldn't understand what Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichihem Madara were thinking, probably because she's not an idiot, right? When entering the room, Kashina discovered that several people were sitting at the oval wooden table in the room. Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichihamadara were sitting in the main seats, and below them were Chihafugaku and Konan. Followed by Tadar, Hashigaki Kisum and Kakuzu. To Kashina's surprise, Gara was also sitting upright on one side. This is. Kashina looked at Nagato with some confusion, she was a bit puzzled. What was Nagato doing with this gesture? Arachimaru, you also come and sit down. Hearing Yuzumaki Nagato's voice, Arachimaru's face suddenly turned bitter. Having brought Kashina, he was about to leave quietly, but he didn't expect to be called on. With a shrug, Arachimaru sat down in the seat closest to him. He didn't know what the leader and Madara were up to again, but it certainly wouldn't be a good thing to involve himself in. Nagato-san, let's begin. Watching Kashina take her seat with an expressionless face, Ichihem Madara's gruff yet volatile voice rang out. This made Kashina instantly suspicious. What exactly is going on? Even Ichihamadara was vaguely excited, and what the other party called Nagato-san. Gentlemen, I have called you all here to announce to you the establishment of the land of Shinobi, and the declaration of war on the entire Shinobi world. Nagato slowly spoke, and with just this one sentence, everyone except the Ichiha people looked at him in shock. Konan glanced at Yuzumaki Nagato in astonishment, and then quickly looked at Ichiha Fugaku and Madara. Seeing the same stony face of the three, Conan was full of confusion at this moment. Originally, she wanted to tell Nagato about Ryuji. But after the Ichiha clan's family exam, she searched the entire Megakur, but couldn't find the other party at all. This made her even more suspicious of the relationship between the other party and the exam space. But since Nagato suddenly said she didn't know how to say it. Declare war on the entire shinobi world. Tadara looked at Yuzumaki Nagato weirdly, and then looked at the others who were also confused, and it dawned on him. Sure enough. Akatsuki is going to start a war. He thought, how could the biggest warmonger in the shinobi world fight for such ridiculous notions as peace in the shinobi world? Leader, why are we going to wage war? Can I be given the task of attacking Kanoha? The corners of Tadara's mouth were high, and his gaze was burning as he looked at Yuzumaki Nagato. When Tadara saw the leader send Kanoha to heaven with Shinra Tensei, he wondered if he could do it. Now, the opportunity came. Hahaha. 
But before he could burst out laughing, the comment from Mitshahamadara made him instantly stifle his laughter. This war is to preserve the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the land of Shinobi. It's for the permanent peace and great unity of the Shinobi world. Ha! Huh. Listening to what Ichihamadara said, Dadara, Dadara cocked his head to look at Yuzumaki Nagato, his mouth holding a smile and his teeth clenching his lips in a death grip. He was afraid that he would laugh out loud, which would make Ichihamadara furious and kill him. He swore that the reason he asked Nagato about the war was just a casual question, but he never expected that Ichihamadara would give such an answer. This war is to preserve the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the land of Shinobi Pfft Hahaha. If it wasn't the Chihemidar who said that, Dadara would have patted him on the shoulder and asked him if he was crazy. Isn't the land of Shinobi just a new name for a Megagur? What the hell is sovereignty and territorial integrity? Dadara squinted at Chihemidara with a serious face. He figured it out. In the Shinobi world, the older the year of the Shinobi, the more shameless they were. No wonder his strength was so powerful, paid for with shame, right? That's why he's so shameless. Truly shameless. Madara-san is right. We really want to safeguard the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the land of Shinobi. Wait what? Hearing Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichihem Madara say the same brazen words, Tadara was suddenly shocked. He never imagined that the leader would actually say so. Is this Ichihem Madara's illusion technique? Tadara took a deep look at Yuzumaki Nagato. No shame. Worthy of being the leader. You can repeat this sentence down without changing your expression. Your strength is also paid with shame, right? Looking at Dadara's inexplicable expression and the surprised expression of the other people, Ichihem Madara snorted coldly. He felt that these people were not up to par. Dadara, I told you, you will become the Tsuchikage in the future, right? Haha, <laughs> leader, don't be ridiculous. Dadara almost laughed his head off. He was a Wagakur's renegade shinobi. How could he go back and become the Tsuchikage? Did he really think that just any shinobi from Iwagakur could become the Tsuchikage? Although Inoki somehow told himself that Iwagakur was always ready to welcome him back, Tadara simply didn't believe it. Besides, he's doing fine in Akatsuki. He's not going back. Seeing that Tadara didn't pay attention to his meaning, Yuzumaki Nagato looked at the others. The establishment of the land of shinobi was witnessed by Ichihamadara-san, Ichihafugaku-san, and Yuzumaki Kashina-san of Kanoha. The six Hokage, Yuzumaki Naruto, the six Kazukiage, Gar, the fourth Tsuchikage, Dadar, the six Mizukage, Hashigaki Kisum, and Kusagakur Zarachimaru joined in. For some reason, the above-mentioned cages have rebelled from the various shinobi villages, and now they come to the land of shinobi for help and promise to join the land of shinobi. Because the land of shinobi represents the interests of everyone in the whole shinobi world. So, the land of shinobi agrees to wage war and take back everything that should belong to them, and belong to the land of shinobi. The territory of the land of shinobi is the entire shinobi world. It will not be divided. Proof as soon as Nagato's impassioned voice fell, Tadara couldn't help it any longer. Tadara really wants to point to the leader's nose and ask him. Do you know about shame? He was a shinobi. Albeit a bit skittish, but at the moment, he was genuinely shocked by Yuzumaki Nagato's chutzpah. Forget about Kanoha after all, Ichihamadara, who founded Kanoha, was sitting here, and it was understandable to say that it was the territory of the land of Shinobi. Even Gara was fine. After all, he was the fifth Kazakiage of Suna, which was well known in the world. But weren't other villages too far-fetched? Pulling Kisum and Mia's the Tsuchikage and Mizukage and treating the two Shinobi villages as their own. How long does it take for constipation to come up with something so smelly and long? What made him feel that it was even more ridiculous was that Nagato said he was the sixth Tsuchikage, and Kirim was the sixth Mizukage. Hahaha. <laughs> Tadara thought that this was the funniest joke he had heard in years. Do you really think you can make us cage just by saying we are? If so, let me just say that Kurutsuchi is the fourth Tsuchikage. You can send the other party back to Iwagakur and save yourself the trouble. Tadara wasn't the only one spouting nonsense in his head, even Arachimaru, Hashigaki Kisum, and others looked at Nagato blankly, not knowing what to say. Only Yuzumaki Kashino understood the significance of her presence here. This was Nagato's fear of backlash from Naruto. So he let her attend in place of Naruto Kashina blinked. She thought Yuzumaki Nagato was playing with fire. If Akatsuki was the first side to start a war, with her knowledge of Naruto, Naruto would definitely stand against Akatsuki. Humph. Ignorance. Ichihamadara's cold voice sounded, and the atmosphere of the meeting hall suddenly solidified. 
that Chihafugaku had told them that the monster that destroyed a whole clan of six paths was coming towards the shinobi world, and they also thought that Fugaku's speculation was correct. In the shinobi world, it was very likely that there was still an Atsutsuki classman living in secret. This was also the reason why Nagato and Madara launched the shinobi war in such a hurry. When they thought that in the shinobi world, besides Black Setsu and Atsutsuki Kagai, there was another weird Atsutsuki Urashiki alive, both Madara and Nagato fell chills down their spines. After all, whether it was the six paths sealing Kagai or Naruto and Sasukuri sealing her, it could be seen that a six path shinobi wasn't a simple thing. Although there had been no news from Atsutsuki Urashiki in the shinobi world for so many years, all three people thought that the other party wouldn't die so quietly. Rather, he should be recuperating from his injuries wherever he was in the shinobi world. So after a short discussion, the three of them immediately decided to set off the fourth shinobi world war, to draw the other party out. This was their main purpose. As for crushing the five major shinobi villages, it was just a passing matter for convenience. After all, both Ichiha Midara and Yuzumaki Nagato had the strength to suppress the current shinobi world. But for this matter, Yuzumaki Nagato, Ichiha Midara, or Ichiha Fugaku didn't want to tell anyone. Not even Konan and the people closest to them. After all, apart from the bastard Black Setsu, they had never seen any other Atsutsuki clan member, let alone the enemy. Therefore, before knowing what the other party was going to do, the three weren't prepared to release the news, so as not to alarm the other party. Kano has had a Kakashi was captured by us. He is still alive, we can ask him to send a message back to Kanoha and declare war on the whole shinobi world for the land of shinobi. Ichiha Madara had a flash of light in his eyes. Although there were three people who just invaded Akatsuki, they certainly couldn't send those in pure world reincarnated two back. So the best one to send was Hada Kakashi. As long as Hada Kakashi sent this message back, he was sure that the shinobi world would fall into chaos. It was very likely that the five major shinobi villages would organize a second allied shinobi forces to attack Omegakura, no the land of shinobi. When the time came, whether it was Black Setsu or Kagai or Urashiki, they were bound to show up. By that time, Nagato would directly launch Shibaku Tensei and send the other party into space. In this way, there was nothing in the shinobi world that could stop the existence of the great unification, the land of shinobi. Only in this way could they gather the strength of the whole shinobi world to fight against the attack of the monsters that could wipe out the Atsutsuki clan. What about Kumagakur? Tadara looked at Nagato with some defiance. He didn't believe it. Even if Nagato could talk his way through the roof, what about Kumagakur? Their people didn't join Akatsuki. When no one from Kumagakur is in your so-called land of shinobi, what would you do? Kumagakur. Ichiha Madara looked at Tadara as if he was looking at an idiot. He really couldn't figure out why Tadara would ask such an idiotic question. The Kumo Shinobi once forced Hinata's uncle to die. Didn't you know that? Huh? Tadara was stunned by Ichiha Madara's words. He was about to ask, but he heard the following words from Ichiha Madara. How can we not take revenge on the people that condemned the six Hokage's wife to die? Don't think so, mother of the six Hokage. Yuzumaki Kashina's gaze flickered. Despite the huge waves in her heart, she kept her expression calm. At this moment, she saw Ichiha Madara's ambition. No, it wasn't ambition. Something was forcing him. Forcing him to build up the land of Shinobi. Otherwise, with Ichiha Madara's character and means, the way to induce war wouldn't be this crude at all. After glancing at Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichiha Fugaku quietly, Kashina was even more convinced. What did they know? Perhaps they were afraid of something Atsutsuki Kagaya. Yuzumaki Kashina's mind rapidly turned. As she said, she was dead, regardless of the things that were happening between the shinobi villages. All she cared about was Naruto. She already owed Naruto enough. She couldn't ignore anything about him. I don't have any opinion. But, Naruto's opinion is my opinion. Kashina's words caused Ichiha Madara to freeze for a moment and glance at Yuzumaki Kashina with some dissatisfaction. This is fighting for a great cause. Are you really that stubborn? I'll talk to Naruto later. Yuzumaki Nagato's voice rang out, causing Kashina's eyes to sharply narrow. She finally knew how determined Yuzumaki Nagato was this time. Kashina had already figured out Naruto's value to him, which was why Kashina was willing to befriend Nagato. But at that moment, seeing the solemn expression on Yuzumaki Nagato's face, Kashina's heart sank violently. Nagato is willing to give up Naruto to do it. Let Hada Kakashi go back and declare war on the whole shinobi world. 
Yuzumaki Nagato said so, while his momentum suddenly changed. If he was originally a sharp sword hidden in a scabbard, it was as if he was an erupting volcano at this moment. Everyone could feel the terrible pressure from him. This time, thanks to Madara-san and all of you. I come from war and know that war harms civilians the most, so for this war I demanded. Solve the five major shinobi villages in three days. And calm the effects of the war in five days. Listening to leader Nagato's whimsical words, the dirty words were on Dadara's lips, but he swallowed them back. Three days fight and complete a shinobi world war in three days Dadara really wanted to pull the leader by his collar and ask him, what the fuck are you thinking? This is war. It's not a race. Think about the previous world wars. Dadara thought that even three months wouldn't be enough, three years was more like it. What's more, it was against the whole shinobi world. Three days Dadara looked at the sure-faced leader, and wanted to tell him he was delusional. But seeing the expression on Yuzumaki Nagato's face, Dadara wisely shut his mouth. This is the end of today's meeting. To follow up, we will discuss the specific battle plan. Now, Fugaku-san, Kashina-san, you and I will go to Yuzumaki Naruto together. Yuzumaki Nagato looked indifferent. At this moment, everyone in Akatsuki seemed to see the figure of Diva Path in him. As Yuzumaki Nagato said that, he walked out. Ichiha Fugaku glanced at Kashina, who followed him, and sighed in his heart. He knew what Nagato was going to do, which was nothing but to tell them both the truth about everything. However, he didn't understand why Nagato's attention to Sasuke wasn't as heavy as his attention to Naruto. Clearly, both identities weren't simple. Half an hour later, a staggering figure walked out of a Megakur. He was pale, and his steps were wobbly, and at a glance, people could see that his body had been severely overdrawn. But he looked resolute and kept stimulating his body's potential to go faster. Faster. This person was Hada Kakashi, who had just escaped from a Megakur. He didn't know that Ichiha Madara had released him. He thought he had defeated the guards and escaped in secret. At this moment, carrying the news he had overheard that was enough to shake the entire shinobi world, he ran frantically towards Konoha with his heart full of panic. Are we going to do it now? Toby's head popped out from the ground in the distance, looking at Hada Kakashi's back. His voice spoke to the figure in front of him. Wait, it's too close to a Megakur. A strange voice suddenly sounded out of thin air. This voice was half Black Setsu and half Ichiha Bido. With the voice dropping, a black round hole suddenly appeared in the space in front of Toby, and then the space next to the round hole quickly twisted. Finally, two figures emerged from the distorted space and fell to the ground. It was Ichiha Bido and Atsutsuki Kagaya. It's just that, this time, the left half of Ichiha Bido's body was covered by black setsu. Obviously, Abido couldn't control his actions right now. He had become Black Zetsu's puppet. Seeing that Kagaya's eyes kept watching Hada Kakashi's back, Black Zetsu thought his mother couldn't wait any longer. Looking at the direction of the Megakur, Black Zetsu had the same thoughts. But Fugaku didn't know what happened behind him. At the moment, he was running to the battlefield with the members of Akatsuki. To say that they were all the members of Akatsuki, that wasn't true. There were only six of them, namely, Kakuzu, Dadara, Sasori, Haiden, Kakuzu and Konin. And Konin wasn't a combatant. She had other tasks. So Fugaku, and the six of them, were the first line of defense for the land of Shinobi. The second line of defense was made up of other Shinobi from the land of Shinobi. The main force was the Ichiha clan and the Shinobi of the Megakur, and some of Orochimaru's newly brought in old troops. It could be said that all the Shinobi of the land of Shinobi were brought out. As for the third line of defense although there were only three people, it was the most powerful existence in the land of Shinobi. Yuzumaki Kashina. Yuzumaki Nagato. And Ichiha Midar. Yuzumaki Nagato only had one requirement for this all-out Shinobi war. That was, each defense line had to do their best to inflict heavy damage to the allied Shinobi forces. Nagato didn't care how many people would die this time, because no matter how many people died, he would resurrect them after the battle. To fight against the Atsutsuki clan or those monsters, this battle wasn't about life or death. This battle was for the right to speak in the shinobi world. Six shinobi are sighted up ahead. From the chakra fluctuations they are Akatsuki shinobi. At the forefront of the allied forces, the censor division sends six people, including Ichiha Fugaku. They quickly reported it to the seniors of the allied forces. Six people. Six paths pain. Hearing the report, the fourth Reikich took the lead in reacting, with a hint of disdain in his voice. By now, not to mention the six paths pain, even if all the Akatsuki members came up, 
they would be able to kill these people with minimum effort. After all, everyone in the Allied Shinobi forces knew about the information on them. And, at the suggestion of General Counsel Tsunade, the Allied Shinobi forces had formed special combat teams for each Akatsuki member. With these teams, even if they couldn't win, they could certainly slow down the corresponding Akatsuki member. Not the Six Paths Pains. It's a Chihafugaku and five other people from Akatsuki. Seeing the six figures appear in front of the Allied Shinobi forces, Tsunade's voice suddenly turned cold. She didn't understand why there were only five people of Akatsuki. Did Yuzumaki Nagato think that these five men alone could defeat the Allied Shinobi forces? Don't be careless. These people might be stronger than the information I gave you. Jureyo looks serious. He was also a shinobi who had been strengthened by the exam space, and he knew how abnormal this strengthening was. Besides, except for hiding, in a sense, these guys were real war machines. The most terrible thing was that these guys had skywalk, and they could come and go whenever they wanted. Dadar, I'll take him. Inoki looked at the crowd and took the lead in opening his mouth. Behind him, the second Suchikich blinked but didn't say anything. So sorry, you should leave him to this old woman and the others. The second speaker was Shio. Seeing that no one objected, she leaned on her cane and didn't say anything else. Behind her, Kakura and Rasa were equally silent. Ah, Kissim is mine. Tarumi Mei smiled flirtatiously and cut to the chase. Sensei, I still need to ask for your help. The fourth Reikage spoke to the third Reikage when he was the third Reikage, overbearingly pointing at Kakuzu. This person belongs to me. In that case, Ichihafugaku is left to me and hide into Jureya. The third Hokage, Saratobi Hirazan, spoke with a cold expression. He had to settle things with the Chihafugaku. He didn't know how the other party came back to life, but in this situation, killing the other party wouldn't ruin his image as the third Hokage. Saratobi had a cold smile on his face. As to the professor he was Kanoha's strongest Hokage. It was time for Chihafugaku to feel the fear of being under his control again. In that case, these six people are in your hands. Senju Tsunade nodded to everyone, then summoned a slug the size of a head, let it break down to the size of fists, and gave those small-sized slugs to everyone. These slugs can be used to send messages. After that, Senju Tsunade looked at the fourth Reikage, let the allied forces advance. Ah, the other side has Mike Guy and Senju Hashirama. Our hope of winning is very SLIM. Dadara's long, drawn-out tone rang out, causing everyone to roll their eyes. Before you say that, can you put your clay bombs away for a second? Haydn's angry voice sounded. He felt that he was used as cannon fodder by the leader again. He looked at Dadar, at Sasori, then at Ichihafugaku, Kakuzu, and even Kissim. Which one of them didn't have a wide range of killing jutsu? What about me? 100,000, allied shinobi forces. 100,000. That's 100,000. Even if I cursed everyone one by one, my stomach would be full of blood. This time, he directly cursed the birth of that Yuzumaki Naruto boy. The more Haydn thought about it, the angrier he was. He couldn't wait to cut down these guys to hell. Wait a minute. Everyone pay attention to your red cloud robes properly. If it's torn, replace it in time. Kakuzu's voice rang out, making everyone roll their eyes again. But they all were honest enough to straighten out the red cloud robe they were wearing. Should we fight separately or what? I feel like I'm going to die this time anyway. Haydn made a noise again. He had given up on himself. Let's fight individually and withdraw from the battle first if we're outmatched. Ichihafugaku swept a glance at the Akatsuki's crowd. At this moment, he admitted that he still underestimated Yuzumaki Nagato. He underestimated his charismatic and compelling qualities. Not a single one of Akatsuki's men flinched in front of impending death. With a slight movement of his eyes, Ichihafugaku thought for a moment and added. It doesn't matter even if we die. Nagato will resurrect us. Resurrection. Hearing what Ichihafugaku said, Dadara and others instantly froze and looked at Ichihafugaku in a dumbfounded manner. You mean impure world reincarnation? Sasori's mechanical voice sounded. The vibration in his voice expressed his undisguised shock. Not just you Ichihafugaku shook his head and said nothing more. When Yuzumaki Nagato and Kashina acting were shown to Yuzumaki Naruto, he knew that Nagato had it all figured out. Just like in the survival exam, in order to pave the way for Yuzumaki Naruto, Yuzumaki Nagato easily gave up the reward. Now, all he was doing was paving the way for Yuzumaki Naruto, wasn't it? Let's just go. Let's go. Dadara sighed. He wasn't stupid. On the contrary, he was very smart. 
When reminded by Fugaku, he naturally knew what Fugaku was going to say. With a wave of his arm, the explosive clay bombs he created along the way turned into a giant white bird that rested beside him. Then the exploding clay bird raised its wings and flew towards the sky above the allied forces. Nadara was the first to move, sounding the war cry, followed by the others, rushing towards the Shinobi Alliance. Just as quickly, some figures also rushed out from the Shinobi Alliance to stop them. Impressively, they were the five cages of the five major Shinobi villages. The moment the two sides came into contact, a jutsu then exploded, and the beauty was extraordinary. The Chihafugaku withdrew his gaze from the battlefield and took out a scroll from his robe. The one Orochimaru gave him. Boom. With the infusion of chakra, three coffins suddenly appeared in front of the Chihafugaku. Without waiting for Fugaku to make any move, the lids of the three coffins lifted off instantly, followed by three figures coming out at the same time. Fugaku-san, we meet again. The familiar voice that suddenly emerged from the mouth of the fourth Mizukage in the impure world reincarnation state, made it Fugaku freeze, then instantly react. Arachimaru. Seeing the latter nod, it Fugaku was stunned. He thought Arachimaru wouldn't go to war, but unexpectedly, he turned up in this way. That. That. Is it the second Mizukage and the fourth Mizukage? Why are they on the enemy's side? At this moment, the crowd in the allied army also noticed the sudden appearance of a figure behind Ichiha Fugaku, and were startled. They looked at the three in horror. Especially the shinobi from Kurigakur, their faces were full of panic. They couldn't even dream of understanding how Akatsuki had resurrected the second and fourth Mizukage, when Tarumi Mei, the fifth Mizukage, had only resurrected a few of the seven swordsmen. In an instant, the mentality of the Kiri shinobi of the allied forces collapsed. Who is that man with the half-mask? Your third Mizukich. Some shinobi who didn't know Hanzo of the Salamander, asked the Kiri shinobi beside them. After all, with the second and fourth Mizukich there, besides the third Mizukich, who else could it be? That's Hanzo of the Salamander. The one's demigod of the Megagur. Oh, no, it's him. And this wind right now damn it. A few shinobi didn't know who Hanzo, the Salamander, was. However, most knew. Seeing Hanzo of the Salamander, the allied shinobi crowd were once again astonished. Especially those shinobi who knew of Hanzo's means. Feeling the wind blowing from Hanzo's direction, their expression turned ugly. Is that, Hanzo? The moment she saw Hanzo, Senjutsunade's expression instantly changed. As an old acquaintance, she naturally knew Hanzo's methods. Almost without hesitation, Tsunade immediately contacted the mid-range allied forces, and told them to get ready to use wind release to change the direction of the wind. Fugaku-san, I'll leave the third hokage to you. I'll go down first. Hearing Rachimaru's teasing voice, Ichiha Fugaku instantly looked in the direction of the Shinobi Alliance. Sure enough, there, the third hokage, Saratobi Hirazan, was approaching him with a huge staff in his arms and an amazing momentum. Along the way, all the shinobi gave way for fear of being accidentally injured by them. That's Kanoha's third hokage. His momentum is amazing. Is this the third hokage at his peak? How did he get so strong? In the allied shinobi forces, all the shinobi were stunned to see Saratobi here as in rush toward Ichiha Fugaku. Especially those shinobi who had just joined the allied forces. They had never seen the horrors of Ichiha Madar. For most of them, this was their first time seeing a cage level showdown. They were shocked by the power of the third hokage. The speed, the momentum, even his run caused a huge wave of wind. Ha, look at you guys, like you haven't seen the world. The Kanoha shinobi said with an arrogant look. He was a shinobi who grew up during the reign of the third hokage. He had a deep affection toward the third hokage. At this moment, watching a group of shinobi from other shinobi villages stunned by the heroism of the third hokage, suddenly he also had a sense of pride. Ha 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 ha, you guys don't know, do you? The third hokage, Saratobi Sama, is the strongest hokage recorded by Kanoha. God of Shinobi. Saratobi Hirazan was so fast that he was in front of Ichiha Fugaku in the blink of an eye. The staff in his hand instantly became bigger, thicker, and longer, and then swung at Ichiha Fugaku. Haha, <laughs> see? That's our third hokage Sama's adamantine staff. The only summoned beast with transformation ability in the whole Shinobi world. Third hokage Sama. Invincible. With the impassioned voice of Kanoha's group, the staff in the hands of the third hokage, Saratobi Hirazan, had smashed into Ichiha Fugaku's body. Boom. An amazingly loud sound rang out, and all the allied shinobi subconsciously looked at them. When the smoke cleared, everyone stagnated. 
In an instant, the entire battlefield, as if the pause button was pressed, instantly fell into silence. That is that. It's Susanu again. Damn it. It's so big. Sounds of horror rose one after another, followed by a chorus of sounds of people sucking in cold air. At this moment, both the shinobi who were fighting and the others looked at Ichiha Fugaku's full-bodied Susanu in horror. Pure black, over 300 meters high. The third Hokage's giant adamantine staff was magnified countless times, but it was still not as big as the other party Susanu. Third, retreat quickly. A sonic boom exploded behind the allied forces, and then a figure frantically ran towards Ichiha Fugaku. The figure was extremely fast. With his movements, there was a faint sound of the wind cracking from the void around him. That's Senju Hashirama. Kano has first Hokage. In the allied forces, seeing Senju Hashirama's speed that could no longer be captured by the naked eye, hearing the sound of the wind booming, and feeling the horrible momentum that seemed to tear the sky apart, the shinobi were once again shocked. Their scalps were tingling because of the sudden changes. Too strong. Kanoha's hookages were really strong. Kanoha, didn't you say that your third hookage was the strongest hookage? What about this one? The Kumo shinobi asked, pointing at Senju Hashirama. But the Kanoha shinobi was completely in a daze at the moment and couldn't answer him at all. On the other hand, at the center of the battlefield, after hearing Senju Hashirama's reminder, Saratobi hears and immediately withdrew. Want to leave? Seeing Saratobi Hiruzen's cowardice, Ichiha Fugaku coldly grunted. His nearly 100 meter sword, covered in a Madarasu, was pulled out of the sheath. Then Ichiha Fugaku held the sword with both hands and slashed at Saratobi Hiruzen, who had suddenly retreated. Swish. There was a flash of blacklight, like black lightning. Saratobi Hiruzen's horrified expression instantly froze. Then, his body suddenly split from his right shoulder to his left thigh. Whoosh. In the gap, a black flame suddenly started to burn. The black flame was burning wildly. The speed of its destruction on Saratobi Hirzen's body was surprisingly similar to the speed of repair by the impure world reincarnation technique. In other words, with this sword alone, Saratobi Hirzen, who was resurrected, lost his combat power. At this moment, all those who saw this scene staggered. Can the impure world reincarnation still be broken this way? Hiss. Seeing this, everyone from the allied forces gasped. Third Hokage saw me at this moment, the Kanoha Shinobi finally woke up from his shock. He watched with horror as Saratobi Hiruzen, who was burning with black flames and fell to the ground like a lump of soil. He didn't understand. The third Hokage was obviously the strongest Hokage recorded by Kanoha. Why can't he withstand a slash from Ichiha Fugaku? Looking at Senju Hashirama, who had already appeared in front of Ichiha Fugaku. His throat rolled. He knew that the first Hokage was going to appear here today as well. It's not that Kanoha's Hokages were too weak, but Ichiha Fugaku was too strong. After all, even the strongest Hokage, Saratobi Hiruzen, was no match for Fugaku Senju Hashirama is rushing up as well. Will he disgrace Kanoha Senju Hashirama? Seeing the incoming person, Ichiha Fugaku's face instantly turned gloomy. Although he didn't fight with Senju Hashirama, he was abused by Ichiha Midar. The other party was in existence that could arm wrestle with Ichiha Midar, and even suppressed Ichiha Midar in every fight. Ichiha Fugaku was instantly motivated. Wood release. Wood golem jutsu. Swish. Senju Hashirama slapped his palms together, no one could even see his form seals, and in the next moment, his jutsu was successfully activated. His whole person rapidly rose up, and in the blink of an eye, a thousand meter tall wooden man appeared in front of Ichiha Fugaku. This wood golem jutsu actually exists, seeing Senju Hashirama's wood golem jutsu, Ichiha Fugaku wasn't surprised, but the shinobi below were shocked. This was the second time that they had seen the wood golem jutsu. The first time they saw it was in the survival exam. Yuzumaki Naruto used the wood golem jutsu to fight against Sasuke's thunder god jutsu. But no one thought that they would see this jutsu in reality. Unexpectedly, this turned out to be a jutsu owned by Kanoha's first hokage. Now that the complete body Susanu, Rinnegan, and the Wood Golem Jutsu has appeared. The Thunder God Jutsu and Tensigen are also real, right? No one knew who said it first, but everyone gasped. If the Wood Golem Jutsu appeared in the Shinobi world, could the Thunder God Jutsu and Tensigen be far away? However, except for the Rekage and Kakashi, it seems that there were no Shinobi that could use Lightning Release, let alone Lightning Release Shinobi, that were comparable to Senju Hashirama. Right now, all the people of the allied forces were looking at Senju Hashirama in shock. 
At this moment, seeing Senju Hashirama, they remembered their fear of being dominated by Chihemadara a few days ago. Too strong. Simply inhuman. All the shinobi who looked at Senju Hashirama's wooden golem, felt their scalp tingling. The wooden golem that was thousands of meters high, not to mention the power of wood release or not, the chakra required for such a large jutsu, was massive. The 300 meter tall full-bodied Susanoo couldn't even reach the waist of the wooden man in front of it. Just like a dwarf. No matter how surprised everyone below was, Senju Hashirama coldly looked at Ichiha Fugaku. In the next moment, the wooden golem suddenly clenched its fist and swung it at the Susanoo. Boom. The sonic boom rolled up the dust, sent out a strong wind, and struck a Chihafugaku hard. Ugh. The Chihafugaku let out a heavy grunt. The eternal man Jakyo in his eyes rapidly spun. His Shuringen was even more recklessly pouring strength into his Susanoo. Then, the Chihafugaku picked up the sword that was covered with black flames, and slashed at Senju Hashirama's wooden fist. Bang. At the moment when his Susanoo sword collided with the wooden golem's fist, the Susanoo sword was shattered by the wooden golem's terrifying force, and dissipated into chakra, floating in the air. Although the Susanoo sword was destroyed, the Chihafugaku's attack wasn't ineffective. The fist of Senju Hashirama's golem had a crack, forming a meter wide and several meter long gap. That's not all. In the crack, black Amaterasu flames burned like maggots, searing the inside of the wooden golem's fist along the crack. Humph. Senju Hashirama felt the flame on the wooden golem's fist, and with a slight hum, and no other movement, the wooden golem's fist instantly came off. Then wood release was unleashed. Giant wood roots coiled and soon formed a new fist. Because of the height of the wooden golem, the fallen fist was burned up by a Madarasu before landing. From a distance, it looked like an obliterated black meteor. Senju Hashirama looked down at Ichiha Fugaku, who was panting heavily and struck again with a punch. Boom. A violent boom rang out, the smoke cleared, and the allied crowd gazed blankly at the center of the battle. There, Ichiha Fugaku's eyes were streaked with tears of blood. His hands were pressing against Senju Hashirama's fist. Damn it. Ichiha Fugaku pressed down the blood in his chest. Unlike Madara's battle with the five cages, he couldn't even fully defend against Senju Hashirama's attack on him. Besides, Senju Hashirama was too strong. His combat awareness and combat tactics were too strong. The speed of that wooden golem's fist left Ichiha Fugaku with no room to gather his Susumu sword again. At this moment, Ichiha Fugaku had already overdrawn his eternal Manjakyo's power. Locked. Seeing that Ichiha Fugaku blocked his second punch, Senju Hashirama gave Ichiha Fugaku a second look. Unexpectedly, in addition to Ichiha Midar, there were people in the shinobi world who could block his full power punch. Hmm, how about this? SHHH, SHHH, SHHH. A gust of wind broke out, and Ichiha Fugaku subconsciously looked overhead. With just one look, he instantly froze. This how is that possible Ichiha Fugaku looked at the hundreds of fists overhead with horror. They stretched out from all over the wooden golem, just like countless wooden tentacles, overlooking him. Seeing this, Ichiha Fugaku was shocked. At this moment, he only felt a cool air rushing down from the Susanoo below him, from the bottom of his feet, all the way to the sky. He was completely frozen. He swore that he didn't underestimate Senju Hashirama, let alone make any mistakes in the battle. But this why is this gap so big? Ichiha Fugaku was desperate as he watched those fists coming at him overhead. He stared at these fists, knowing that his present Susanoo couldn't bear the other party's attack, so at the moment, there was only one idea in his heart. Should I use Aizanagi? Ichiha Fugaku's thoughts quickly flashed, but eventually, there was no other action. He was under Senju Hashirama's attack. Bang. 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 Fists and arms made up of giant trees, bombarded Ichiha Fugaku's Susanoo like crazy. One punch, two punches, countless punches. Ichiha Fugaku could resist at first, but with Senju Hashirama's constant attacks, Ichiha Fugaku could no longer resist. In the end, he simply gave up resistance. The sound of dense fists hitting bone emanated from the center, and the shinobi allied crowd looked at it in near stasis. Countless fists on the wooden golem frantically attacked Ichiha Fugaku, and even a shadow appeared with every attack. Each punch blasted on Susanoo, the terrifying power transmitted raised a large amount of dust. What shocked countless people even more, was that Ichiha Fugaku's complete body Susanoo was getting smaller and smaller as Senju Hashirama kept attacking. Finally, it even disappeared into the dust. He he's not just going to die, is he? A shinobi from Kumagakur looked at the center of the battle. 
The Hokage's giant wooden golem caused the ground to tremble with every punch. With so many fists blasting down, he didn't have to look to know that the ground there was probably shaved down. No way, he's the patriarch of the Ichiha clan. Surly has Shuringen secret technique that could even defeat Danzo would come out later. The speaker was a Karigaku Jomen. As he spoke, he suddenly looked aside at the frozen Kanoha Shinobi. This Kanoha Shinobi was the one who started to cheer for the third Hulkage. At the moment, his eyes were wide open, his mouth was wide open, and he was looking at the center of the battlefield with horror. Hey man, wake up. The shinobi from Kumagakur slapped the former on the shoulder, causing him to jolt, then look around in bewilderment. Didn't you say that the third Hokage is the strongest Hokage? How could the first Hokage beat Ichiha Fugaku? The guy can't even fight back. Hearing the other shinobi around him, the Kanoha shinobi's mouth opened and closed a few times, but nothing came out. If by now, he hadn't figured out what was going on, then he's really a fool. However, who would have thought that the records in Kanoha's ninja school about the third Hokage, is the strongest Hokage throughout the generations of Hokage was false. Forget it. I see you don't know either. Why didn't Danzo come for this siege against Akatsuki? Once again, stunned by this question, the Kanoha shinobi simply pretended not to hear anything and didn't answer. So embarrassing. This Kanoha shinobi was about to die of embarrassment at the moment. If not for the fact that each shinobi's position in the allied force was fixed, at this moment, he would have found a crack in the ground and head there. Not far behind the shinobi alliance, three figures were lurking in the gap in the void. Black Zetsu, Kagaya, and Tobi planned to capture all the nine-tailed beasts. Because they were hiding in the crack between spaces, they could see the dynamics of the allied shinobi forces, but the allied force couldn't detect them. So, at this moment, even if they talked, no one could hear them. Why? Atsutsuki Kagaya's ears twitched as she looked at Black Setsu with some admiration. She sometimes really couldn't understand why the brainless Black Setsu sometimes had so much brain. With Senju Hashirama, the two lines of defense set up by Yuzumaki Nagato, won't be able to stop the allied shinobi forces. So, either here Ichiha Madara, or the Ichibi and Kayubi, who are still in Omegakur, will show up at the battlefield. The Nanabi is sealed. As long with that, Black Zetsu's gaze suddenly looked at Akumo Shinobi dressed in black among the Alliance crowd. He found out that the other party was the Hachibi's Jinchuriki, Killer B. Unexpectedly, he was allowed to be brought to the battlefield by the fourth Rikage. Even if all three tailed beasts are gathered here, if we capture the tailed beasts, these Shinobi will definitely attack us. The white Zetsu Tobi raised his hand in fear and was about to speak when he heard the unquestionable voice from Black Zetsu. When three-tailed beasts Jinchuriki appear together, as long as the demonic statue of the outer path is summoned, it will capture the remaining tailed beasts by itself. After Black Zetsu said that, he stopped talking. Once again, silence fell between the three. Is this it, Mount Maiboku? Outside Mount Maiboku, Atsutsuki Teneri's consciousness descended on an Atsutsuki puppet. He quietly surveyed the place that seemed like a paradise. The look on his face didn't fluctuate. Atsutsuki Teneri's control puppet condensed a yellow energy bomb, and threw it at Mount Maiboku. Boom. The energy bomb flew for a while, then inexplicably exploded ahead as if it was blocked by something. Is this a boundary? Atsutsuki Teneri was slightly stunned. In the next moment, several Atsutsuki puppets around him moved together and gathered a round of energy projectiles to blast towards Mount Maiboku. Suddenly, a boundary of shimmering light appeared in front of Atsutsuki Teneri. As the boundary was revealed, the real scene within it was exposed to Atsutsuki Teneri. Environmentally, there was no change. The only change was that as the boundary was revealed, inside the boundary, toad after toad appeared in front of Atsutsuki Teneri. Huge variously colored toads were lying in various places inside the boundary, looking at Atsutsuki Teneri in a creepy manner. This weird scene would make any shinobi feel creepy. Fortunately, Atsutsuki Teneri wasn't an ordinary guy, or rather, he wasn't a normal guy. In the face of countless pairs of eyes staring at him, Atsutsuki Teneri's voice was still cold and unapproachable. Hand over Hayuga Hinata, and I will not kill you. Otherwise, after today, there will be no more Mount Maiboku in the shinobi world. Atsutsuki Teneri slowly said so. His killing intent was unconcealed. In fact, he knew the true strength of these toads. Although they were considered a force to be reckoned with in the shinobi world, for the Atsutsuki puppets, such strength wasn't enough to hold them back. The Great Toad Sage gave an order. Only people who come to study the Sinjutsu are allowed to enter Mount Maiboku, no one else. 
you please go back. A toad was covered with a black cloak, with a small body standing on the head of the toad crowd, spoke coldly. Humph. Hearing Fukasaku, Atsutsuki Tanari directly attacked without saying anything. As he gave the order, countless puppets of the Atsutsuki clan appeared outside Mount Maiboku one after another, and blasted at the barriers around it. For a while, the whole sky was illuminated as if it was daylight. Countless yellow energy bombs exploded above the boundary, frantically tearing the space around the barriers. The Atsutsuki puppet's round of attack made the barrier around Mount Maiboku crack. Mount Maiboku Toad Clan, prepare for battle. Seeing that the barrier was about to break, Fukasaku's expression changed. He could tell that these people were very strong from the sealess jutsu that they used. At least, they were much better than the Toad Clan. Moreover, their numbers were far more than that of the Toads. But the orders of the Great Toad Sage were absolute. As long as the Great Toad Sage didn't speak, even if all the Toads fought to the death, and they couldn't let the other party step into Mount Maiboku. Boom. 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 The barrier above Mount Maiboku was instantly broken by another collective bombardment of yellow energy bombs. Then the Atsutsuki clan puppets rushed towards the toads in a frenzy. SHH, 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 SHH. An Atsutsuki puppet suddenly ejected countless blades from his body, and directly dismembered the huge brown toad in front of it. Flesh and blood are flying all over the sky, leaving all the toads stunned. Not waiting for them to react, in the next moment, a round of yellow energy bombs indiscriminately bombarded, directly killing them. In Mount Maiboku, a burst of wails of the toads and the smell of charred grilled meat wafted out. No one knew how long it took. While Fukasaku was tearing apart a puppet with the help of Gamma Bunta, Shima suddenly appeared in front of all of them. Stop the killing. The Great Toad Sage has asked you to take her away. Saying this, a red toad with a steel fork stepped forward and handed over Hayuga Hinata, who was unconscious. After picking Hinata up, glancing at her, and seeing that she was only unconscious, Atsutsuki Tanari picked her up in a princess carry and turned to leave. As he left, the Atsutsuki puppies instantly followed. Shima, if the great toad sage does this, what will Naruto do? Fukasaku's gaze slightly sunk. Hinata's feelings for Naruto, let alone their toad clan, the entire shinobi world knows. Now, handing over Hinata to that guy, wouldn't it cause problems with Naruto? The Great Toad Sage has his own way. Naruto's matter isn't our concern. Fugaku died. In Omegakur, no, it should be called the Land of Shinobi now. Yuzumaki Nagato slowly said so, looking at the news on the paper crane in front of him. The paper crane was Conan's paper release technique, which was also the significance of Conan's move to the front lines, instantly transmitting the information in front to the shinobi in the second and third lines. Was it Hashirama? At Yuzumaki Nagato's side, when Ichihamadara heard Yuzumaki Nagato's words, he said so without lifting his head. At the moment, most of his attention was on the map in front of him. Yes, Senju Hashirama used the wood golem jutsu, and Fugaku san couldn't resist. Ah, he's smart. He didn't use Aizanagi. Ichihamadara shook his head. Whether it was the impure world reincarnation or the immortality jutsu, if Ichihafugaku used Aizanagi, he would lose the eternal manjakyo after the resurrection. If Senju Hashirama struck, no one could stop him but me. Ichihamadara said so, putting on the red robe from the stool, he walked outside. In the meantime, at Mount Maiboku, the unconscious Naruto woke up. He didn't remember how he fell unconscious, he only recalled practicing sage mode with Hinata. Then it seemed that someone had invaded Mount Maiboku, and the toads were ready to fight as if they were facing an enemy. Then, he didn't know what happened after that. Naruto looked around in confusion, Mount Maiboku, which had been peaceful, had somehow been destroyed beyond recognition. Smoke everywhere, and groaning and wailing toads. Even the air was filled with the strong scent of a barbecued toad. Naruto's clear face quickly scrunched up as he immediately looked around himself, and when he didn't see the girl, his little face instantly panicked. Hinata. Where's Hinata? Naruto quickly got up, looking for Hinata, but he didn't find the other party at all. There wasn't even a single human being in sight. Kid, stop shouting. The little girl you are looking for has been caught by Atsutsuki Tanari. A somewhat shrill voice rang out, causing Naruto to flinch and twist his head to see that the speaker was a small toad, and his face instantly changed. He knew this toad, but he didn't know its name. But ever since he had been brought here by the flamboyant green toad, he had been teaching himself and Hinata to meditate. That toad was the only one he knew. Who is Atsutsuki Tanari? Why did he take Hinata? 
Naruto was anxious. He had never met Atsutsuki Tanari and didn't understand why the other party wanted to take Hinata. The other party wants to destroy the shinobi world. Naturally, he captured Hinata for that purpose. She mulleted Yuzumaki Naruto with an expressionless face. She didn't know why the Great Toad Sage thought so highly of this yellow-haired brat, but since it was the Great Toad Sage's arrangement, she could only obey. Destroy the shinobi world. Naruto repeated doubtfully, then said, Why? What? Why? Shima was stunned by Yuzumaki Naruto's question, then asked back, You humans, you need a reason to destroy the shinobi world. Urshima's rhetorical question caused Naruto to freeze. He thought about it, then decided there was nothing wrong with what the short toad in front of him was saying. Where's Atsutsuki Tanari? I'm going to save Hinata. Yuzumaki Naruto wasn't going to waste any more time with the toad in front of him. Hinata had been out here with him. Now, Hinata had been abducted. Naruto only knew that he had to save her. You can't beat Atsutsuki Tanari now, let alone get the girl back. Shima slowly said so, then looked at the disheveled Naruto and continued without a pause in her voice, unless unless what? Naruto's eyes instantly lit up when he heard that there was still a chance to turn things around. Unless you can learn sage mode, you can't beat Atsutsuki Tanari. His bright eyes instantly dimmed. Naruto's mouth slightly curled, expecting the other party to have something up her sleeve. He didn't even have advanced jutsu right now, let alone sage mode. In ninja school, he studied basic chakra refining, kunai throwing, and the three basic techniques. At Nagato Aniki's, there was even less to learn. Even if he learned the sage mode now, it was useless. Seeing Naruto look down again, Shima's protruding toad eyes narrowed. She knew Yuzumaki Naruto was hooked. The great toad sage knows your strength, so told me to teach you a special senjutsu. Although it's not as useful as the sage mode you are learning now, it can be used to seal the Atsutsuki clan. Shima said so, feigning some concern as she looked at Yuzumaki Naruto. But this senjutsu is a forbidden technique and will cause some degree of damage to your body, as long as I can save Hinata, I'll do anything. Naruto's face was filled with determination. He and Hinata had been staying together since Nagato and Nikki had gone to Konoha and taken him and Hinata away. At that moment, Hinata was taken away from him, and Naruto felt as if he had lost his heart. What do I need to do? Naruto expectantly looked at Shima. Since he was born, he had never met anyone who had schemed on him, so Naruto didn't put his guard up. At this moment, Naruto didn't take too many precautions against Shima, who wasn't human. Come with me. Shima glanced at Naruto, then turned around and hopped forward to lead Naruto toward the depths of Mount Maiboku. Ten minutes later, Naruto looked at the old toad as huge as a hill in front of him, and his whole body froze. He looked at the old great toad sage in disbelief, wondering how a toad could grow so big. Besides, how long has he lived? You're here. Child of the prophecy while the old and magnificent voice sounded, the great toad sage's narrowed eyes quietly looked at Yuzumaki Naruto. With the resurrection of Atsutsuki Kagai and the inexplicable appearance of the exam space in the shinobi world, he was afraid that Atsutsuki Kagai would know what happened back then, and come after Mount Maiboku. The reason why Mount Maiboku was blocked and the news was released to let people who want to learn Sinjutsu enter Mount Maiboku was also to attract Naruto, the child of the prophecy. After all, with all the toads in Mount Maiboku, only those shinobi who had a contract with them could come to Mount Maiboku. Only Yuzumaki Naruto would cross paths with these shinobi. So, everything was a plan that he had laid out. At that time, he was the one to compel Atsutsuki Hagoromo to seal Kagai, together with Atsutsuki Hamer, so naturally, he had the means to seal the Atsutsuki clan. It's just that some demanding conditions were required. As for the emergence of Atsutsuki Tanari, although it was somewhat unexpected, it didn't affect his plan. Moreover, the other party dared to come to Mount Maiboku and run wild. They had to pay the price. Just right. He could use the guide to experiment and test the sealing effect of the sage toad sealing technique. What should I do? Naruto looked at the old toad expectantly. He was wearing a hat like a wizard, with a green bead with an oil character on his chest, and the folds of his face looked as if they could bury Naruto. You don't need to do anything. Gamamaru's eyes seemed to open and close as he looked down at Naruto's soul, and for a moment, he actually sighed. At that time, the plan to see Latsutsuki Kagaya was surprisingly successful, so some of the backstabbings that had been done weren't useful. Who would have thought that, after thousands of years, Atsutsuki Kagaya would finally come back? To think that after thousands of years, everyone he knew died, even the sage of six paths, whom he watched grow up, died. 
It was surprising that Atsutsuki Kagaya was the only person from his own time in the shinobi world. With his eyes slightly closed, he withdrew his thoughts. Without any obvious movement from Gamamaru, the oil bead hanging from his neck suddenly flew up and arrived above Yuzumaki Naruto's head. The bead was the size of a pearl to Gamamaru, but to Naruto, it was larger than his entire body. The bead circled around Naruto's head twice, then fell straight down, as if it had sensed something. Whoosh. With a slight sound, Yuzumaki Naruto was instantly enveloped by the oil bead. At the moment of entering the bead, a thick, suffocating, and squeezing sensation frantically came over him. It turned out that this bead was highly compressed toad oil. The toad oil frantically poured into Naruto's body from his mouth. His five senses and seven orifices all felt suffocated. Naruto struggled, but the pressure from the oil around him made it impossible for him to break free, let alone breathe, and Naruto felt he was choking. As Naruto's body continued to absorb the toad oil, a bizarre pattern instantly appeared on his body. The yellowish-brown lines kept appearing on his body, and by the time the strange lines had completely covered his body, the oil bead outside Naruto's body instantly disappeared, followed by the slow fading and eventual disappearance of the lines on his body. This is. Everything went on as normal, and Naruto looked curiously at the fading lines on his hands. It's amazing. That's it. Naruto asked dully as he cast his eyes above him, looking at Gamamaru, who looked a few years older. Shima, you and Fukusaku will accompany him on his journey to bring back the little girl. Gamamaru said in an unusually tired voice. Without waiting for Shima to say something, he had already narrowed his eyes and fallen into a drowsy sleep. At the same time, in the Shinobi World Battlefield. With the defeat of Ichihafugaku, the land of Shinobi suddenly lost ground on the battlefield. Seeing Senju Hashirama's power, in order to prevent the meaningless sacrifice, Dadara, Sasori, and others retreated while fighting. But this would only delay the arrival of the allied forces in the land of Shinobi. Dadara, come on, Senju Hashirama is coming. In midair, Sasori's urgent voice rang out. In the next moment, several black and red figures swiftly swept past him, causing Dadara, who was preparing his final self-destruct technique, to freeze. Looking at the wooden golem that was approaching step by step, Dadara's words oozed with resentment. Damn it. Looking at the wooden golem again, Dadara turned his head in shame, moved his feet, and evacuated to the sky. Senju Hashirama was too abnormal to be stopped by them. Boom. Boom. Every step of the huge wooden golem felt like an earthquake, and cracks spread under his feet. Even more frightening was the wooden golem, which was full of shinobi. From a distance, it was a head-scratching sight. At the moment, the wooden golem was no longer a mere jutsu. It was more like a fortress of war, slowly moving forward. Dadara and others retreated quickly. Soon, they were in front of the second line of defense. The second line of defense was led by the owners of Manjakyo Shuringen from the Ichiha clan. The men's faces instantly fell as they saw Akatsuki's crowd retreat in a wretched defeat. The news of former group leader Ichiha Fugaku's death in battle was already known to them. Still, before entering the war, they had been told that the fight was like the original one from the exam, the one that destroyed Konoha. In this war, no one else will die except for Yuzumaki Nagato. And that was precisely why, at the moment, they weren't sad. But they were completely overwhelmed by Senju Hashirama's power. They watched with horror as the Akatsuki group fled the wooden golem behind them. Too strong. It's terrible. They didn't even have the desire to fight. This this is something we can't fight against, right? No one knew who said that, but the gulp from their throats was unmistakable in the deadly silence of the battlefield. But there is no way we can retreat, the Ichiha women and children who can't fight are still in the village. If we retreat why are we fighting this war? We're not even a match for them. A group of shinobi from the Ichiha clan, looked at the crowd approaching from afar, their faces pale. The huge shadow of the wooden golem quickly enveloped everyone, causing instant despair. They weren't on the same level at all. They couldn't even think of resisting. Hashirama, what's the point of picking on the younger generation? Come and pick on me. With the sound of an overbearing voice, in the next moment, behind the Ichiha crowd, a huge figure descended. The figure had dark blue wings, exquisite battle armor, coupled with a two-handed chakra sword. The familiar figure sent a burst of vitality through all of the Ichiha clansmen, while the faces of their enemies instantly gaped. The five cages, in particular, saw Ichiha Madara's complete Susanoo again, and their faces instantly became gloomy. It's not over yet. In the eyes of countless people who were shocked, Ichiha Madara controlled the Susanoo to raise its hand. 
In an instant, a blue shield of less than a kilometer took shape in his hand. Humph. Ichihamidara snorted coldly. The shield on his hand was thrown out. As if that wasn't enough, Ichihamidara's full-bodied Susanoo suddenly glowed with a blue halo that spread from the top of Susanoo's head down to the ground. The spirits of all the Ichiha clansmen who were affected by the spread of the halo were instantly shaken. Glory of Ichiha. Their eye technique abilities were enhanced. The consumption was reduced. The Ichiha clansmen felt the change in their bodies with shock, then one by one, they turned into reckless men of war, and frantically dashed towards the enemy. Shit. Art is an explosion. Performance of a hundred puppets. What a release. What a dragon bullet technique. Seeing Ichiha Madara blow the horn for a counterattack, Tadara and the others instantly followed the shinobi in their counterattack. That's not all, they charge even faster than the shinobi below. Tadara summoned the giant clay bird again, throwing clay bombs in the air in a frenzy. Hashigaki Kisum and Kakuzu walked on air with Skywalk, pouring out their jutsu with full force. But Sasori was the most ruthless of all. Hundreds of puppets appeared in mid-air, and tens of thousands of chakra strings kept shaking, controlling the puppets to wreak havoc. On the other hand, on the side of the allied shinobi forces, with the participation of cage-level combat power on the battlefield, the casualties of the land of shinobi were also increasing rapidly. Every second, people died. Died under all kinds of jutsu. At this moment, the fourth great shinobi war fully erupted. Just as the fourth shinobi world war was in full swing, on the moon, a pair of pale blue eyes slowly opened. Is this the Tensigen? Atsutsuki Tanari felt the power of the Tensigen in his eyes, and looked at the shinobi world. Suddenly, his eyes penetrated the layers of space and fell directly on the shinobi world. Specifically, the battlefield of the shinobi world. These natives of the shinobi world created by Sage of Six Paths, have not realized their mistake yet. Atsutsuki Tanari's faint voice rang out, giving no indication of joy or anger. Hinata is on her way. This shinobi world, full of wars, no longer has any value in existing. Atsutsuki Tanari's eyes slightly narrowed, and an indescribable force directly enveloped the moon. Boom. Boom boom. A loud noise suddenly appeared on the moon, followed by a powerful sweep of force that pushed the moon, which had been spinning around the shinobi world. It was directly pushed out of its fixed orbit and flew towards the shinobi world. The moment it was out of orbit, the powerful gravitational force of the shinobi world directly caught it, and then the moon began to increase its speed at a rapid rate. This was Atsutsuki Tanari's plan to destroy the shinobi world, allowing the shinobi world and the moon to collide with each other, killing and clearing all life in the shinobi world. After that, it was up to him and Hayuga Hinata to create a new civilization of humans on the ruins. In the shinobi world, Ichiha Madara and Senju Hashirama were in battle. Every movement of the two giants with different colors, erupted into a violent boom, each move carrying immense power. Boom. 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 The aftermath of the battle between the two swept around, causing other shinobi to retreat into the distance. Hmm. This shadow the first to notice the abnormalities in the shinobi world was the Nara clan and the allied shinobi forces, who were using the shadow secret techniques on the battlefield. Hence, they were sensitive to the changes in the shadows on the battlefield. Everyone's shadow was stretching, and not only that, it's the sky. Someone screamed, and everyone immediately looked up at the sky. Is it the moon? It seems to be getting bigger. What what's going on here? The two groups instantly put distance between them and then looked at the sky above them. Over their heads, the moon was rapidly getting bigger. Could it be something Ichihamidara summoned? That's too scary to Rumi Mei stared dumbfounded at the moon that was increasing in size overhead, and her whole body froze. She knew Ichiha Madara had summoned two meteorites before. At that time, he used the one that was only 80 meters wide, but now, when he used Susanoo, it was thousands of meters wide. Summoning the moon wouldn't be a problem for him. Is the moon really falling? Senju Tsunade froze and looked at the falling moon. After just a moment, it had grown bigger. The silver plate will fall, and the ancient clan will return, bringing new wars and disputes so, this was what the prophecy from the great toad sage meant. Looking above him, Jiraiya finally understood the meaning of the latest prophecy that the great toad sage told him. Sunade, someone is on the moon. It's the enemy. Jiraiya's face was solemn. The second half of the great toad sage's prophecy was about how the moon's fall would cause a bigger war in the shinobi world. Isn't it a Chihemidar? Senju Tsunade was stunned by Jureya's warning. She and Tsurumi Mei thought the same thing. They both thought it was a Chihemidara's handiwork, but to their surprise, it was someone else. 
Could it be, Atsutsuki Kagaya? She came out of the seal. Senju Tsunade was suddenly suspicious. To be honest, with Black Zetsu's scheming capabilities, Senju Tsunade was more inclined to believe that the progenitor of Chakra in the Shinobi world was already released and scheming something else. Therefore, there must be other enemies above the moon, as Jiraiya said. Who could it be? At the current speed of the moon. If we don't find a way to stop it, the entire shinobi world will be obliterated by the impact. Shikaku, inform the leaders of the allied teams to suspend the attack for now. Senju Tsunade only thought for a moment and then made a decision. No matter who the other party was since they dared slam the moon towards earth, they were the enemy of the shinobi world. Even under such an act, even Akatsuki of the land of shinobi wasn't as harmful as the other party. Ha, finally came out. Hearing the noise of the crowd, Ichiha Madara also saw the strange moon above. With a faint, Ichiha Madara drew back, and the full body Susanoo on his body faded away like a tide. Did you do this? Senju Hashirama saw Ichiha Madara's retreat, and thought that Ichiha Madara's plan had been completed. His face suddenly turned gloomy. Hashirama, we'll fight next time. Ichiha Madara laughed and then ran to the rear without looking back. Hiding. Come with me. Ichiha Madara barked a command to Haydn in the distance, startling Haydn, who hadn't recovered from the successive shocks. Seeing that Ichiha Madara was calling him, Haydn's face suddenly turned bitter. Haydn could figure out what kind of enemies and situations he was going to face when he was captured by Ichiha Madara. Ha Haydn let out a long sigh. This was the second time he regretted that he had been given such a gift of death. I hope the enemy becomes bloody this time. The thought was a random one, but Haydn didn't dare to delay Ichiha Madara's order at all, and quickly followed him. After seeing all kinds of things about Ichiha Madara, Haydn was really afraid of him. He couldn't fight him, couldn't reason with him. Alas, he couldn't even speak in front of him. Believers of Jashin would still be afraid. Mother, is Atsutsuki Tanari crazy? Black Setsu gawked at Atsutsuki Kagaya. Even with his intelligence, he couldn't figure out what Atsutsuki Tanari's crazy brain was thinking. If the moon collides with Earth wouldn't that destroy the entire shinobi world? Shit. Did someone kill your parents? Or was your clan decimated? Why would you take such a massive revenge? Hearing Black Zetsu's question, Atsutsuki Kagaya was also baffled. In her eyes, Atsutsuki Tanari, like Naruto and Sasuke, was her children. The difference, at most, was that one was a direct grandson, and the others were great-grandsons. What's wrong with Atsutsuki Tanari? What triggered him? Why are you destroying Earth? I'm still on Earth. Moreover, I have watched this shinobi world grow step by step, how can you destroy it? Zetsu, I'm going to the moon to beat him. Atsutsuki Kagaya's dull and somewhat adorable voice rang out, causing Black Zetsu to jolt. He gradually felt that his mother had learned bad things from the exam space broadcast. He couldn't believe that she said she was going to go to the moon and beat up Atsutsuki Tanari. Mother, you go ahead then. With something like this happening to the moon, I think both Nagato and Ichiha Madara will go to the moon. Black Setsu took control of Ichiha Bido's body, and revealed an ambitious smile. You can feast on Ichiha Bido when you come back, mother. Haha. <laughs> Hearing Black Setsu say so, Atsusuki Kagaya thought about it, and thought that the other party was reasonable. Glancing at Black Setsu's appearance, Atsutsuki Kagaya suddenly had a dilemma in her heart. Her two ungrateful sons made names in the shinobi world, while Black Setsu, who was good to her, didn't even have a body. To put it bluntly, Black Setsu was a lump of sentient chakra. This made Atsutsuki Kagaya feel bad. After all, Black Setsu was recognized by the exam space. Number one most filial son in the shinobi world, Black Setsu. Zetsu, over the years, you have suffered. Atsutsuki Kagaya's sudden show of affection stunned Black Setsu. Then Atsutsuki Kagaya gently patted Ichiha Bido's shoulder as Black Setsu looked on, flattered. When I recover my strength, I will build a complete body for you. Atsutsuki Kagaya's words made Black Setsu freeze, and without waiting for him to say anything, Kagaya's arm flicked, and a portal instantly opened in the void. Then Atsutsuki Kagaya took to the air and flew towards the moon above, as the allied forces of the shinobi world watched. Gulp. A hard gulp of saliva sounded as the shinobi alliance looked in disbelief at the three people who suddenly appeared in front of them. Oh, no, it's two people now. The strange woman with two brown horns dragged her long hair and flew away above people's heads. Ichiha Bido. An allied shinobi gawked and looked at Ichiha Bido, who was possessed by Black Setsu. 
When the other party suddenly appeared in front of them, they wondered what was going on. What? Abido, that's Black Zetsu. Black Zetsu. So, how did he change like this, after just a short period of time? Looking at Ichiha Abido again, some people started to pity. Unexpectedly, Abido ended up like this. Being controlled by Black Zetsu was pretty miserable. Wait. That's Black Zetsu and Abido. Who's the woman who just flew away? A shinobi looked up at the sky. There was a figure of a woman with long hair. That would be the progenitor of Chakra. Atsutsuki Kagaya. What? She was actually released. Did the moon fall because of her? Hearing such speculation, the crowd of the allied forces immediately surrounded the black and white Zetsu duo in three layers. You short-sighted people. Black Zetsu coldly looked at the crowd in front of him. If he wasn't in a hurry and didn't want to cause problems for himself, he would have used wood release cutting technique to kill them all in one go. One day, you will understand how pathetic you are. Black Zetsu's voice fell, and in the next moment, the space in front of him suddenly distorted. Then, the two disappeared. Quick, go tell the commanders what happened here. Leaving aside the commotion Black Zetsu caused at the allied shinobi forces, at the moment, Black Zetsu was on his way to the land of shinobi with Tobi in tow. His purpose was naturally the Ichibi and Kayubi. Meanwhile, in Omegakur, Ichihamidara approached Nagato with enthusiasm. The enemy has appeared. Is it Atsutsuki Urashiki? Ichihamidara was looking at Yuzumaki Nagato expectantly. If it were really Atsutsuki Urashiki who caused this problem, it would be a good thing. As long as the other party was dealt with, they had a chance of defusing the crisis that would come to the shinobi world. The location is too far away to sense the other party's chakra. Yuzumaki Nagato shook his head. He didn't know who the other man was either. So, the best thing to do is not to blast the moon to pieces, but to go there and make contact with the enemy. Go to the moon Ichihamidara hesitated for a moment, then said, That Skywalk Jutsu is incapable of doing that, right? Maybe, I should go ride that brat, Anoki. Urinagato, who was shocked by Ichihamidara's weird thought, shook his head with a wry smile. How would it be possible for him to appear next to Anoki right now, and ask him to cooperate in taking him to the moon? The other party might tear him apart. The moon is solidified out of Jutsu, though from the hands of Sage of Six Paths. His Jibaku Tensei can do it. Then mine should too. Jibaku Tensei. The Chihamidara was stunned, then nodded. Using Jibaku Tensei to go into space wasn't a bad idea. In that case, do it. I can't wait to see the Atsutsuki clan's angry look. On the other side, the top leaders of the allied shinobi forces were intensely discussing things. It's still increasing in speed, and there's no effective way of stopping it. At this speed, once contact is made, the world will be destroyed. No, we have to stop it. By the way, fourth rakage, where are your chakra cannons? Didn't you say you could smash the moon? The opportunity has come. Right, right. Launch Kamagakur's cannons and blast the moon right out of the sky. Listening to the words of a group of people below, Senjutsune showed a hesitant look on her face. Hokage-sama. A huge meteorite suddenly flew up in front of a Megakur. Two figures were standing on the meteorite, suspected to be Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichihamidara. Meteorite flying up. Yuzumaki Nagato and Ichihamidara are on it. Hearing the report from the subordinate, the expression on Senjutsune and the others instantly changed. Are they going to the moon? Senjutsune reacted instantly. Before she could say anything, Senju Hashirama suddenly interjected from behind her. Tsunade chan is there any way for me to go to the moon? Senju Hashirama's sudden inquiry caused Tsunade to pause. After a short moment of contemplation, she shook her head. No. Even if it's the flying thunder god technique, you still need to mark the target. Looking at Senju Tsunade's embarrassed face, the fourth Reikage's eyes wandered quietly. The first Hokage wants to go to the moon. Yes, to be able to get Madara and Nagato to go to the moon together, there must be something happening on the moon that we don't know about. For whatever purpose and outcome, I'm going to make a trip to the moon. At Senju Hashirama's conclusive words, the fourth Reikage's eyes narrowed. Nabui's heavenly transfer technique had the ability to do that. But this was from the shinobi world to the moon, this wasn't an ordinary transfer. Her heavenly transfer technique could transmit anything to any place, but no person had tried it, except for the third Reikage and the fourth Reikage, who were physically strong. But these two were only teleporting within the shinobi world. This was going to the moon. Although ordinary people's bodies may not be able to withstand the transfer and the speed of light, with the current physical state of the first Hokage maybe, it will work. 
My Kumagakar has the heavenly transfer technique. The fourth Reikage told them about the risks of the heavenly transfer technique, but Senju Hashirama ignored it. Standing in front of the seal for the heavenly transfer technique, the fourth Reikage took a deep look at Senju Hashirama. This was the first time that he could be so close to the god of Shinobi. I brought the chakra cannon out for this battle long ago. Originally we wanted to use it to blast at Shahamadara Susanu. Saying this, the fourth Reikage continued after a pause. At the current rate, they're predicting that the moon and the earth will collide in three hours. If you're not back in two hours, I'll blow the whole moon to pieces, blow up the moon. How looking at the ignorance of the fourth Reikage, Senju Hashirama's face didn't change, but in his heart, he felt that his opponent was truly stupid. What makes you think that the moon can be blown apart? Senju Hashirama's expression remained unchanged, his simple face looking unusually naive. You don't know. The fourth Reikage looked at Senju Hashirama doubtfully. If he hadn't known that the other party hadn't been reborn with impure world reincarnation at the time of the exam, he would have thought that the other party was coaxing him. The question from the exam space. The fourth Reikage showed a proud look on his face. The chakra cannons were from his Kumagakar, and he believed that even if Kanoha's Ichihamadara and Senju Hashirama were more powerful, they had no way to destroy the moon. But his Kumagakar had the chakra cannons at hand. That's the whole point. A smile slowly appeared on the fourth Reikage's face, and his eyes were a little more condescending. Although I haven't seen the chakra cannons you're mentioning, I believe in the judgment of the exam space. Senju Hashirama's eyes slightly narrowed as he looked at the somewhat proud fourth Reikage. He changed his tone. However, it isn't clear if the person who is making the moon fall is on the moon. Even if your chakra cannons could blast the moon, can it destroy the enemies on the moon? Hearing Senju Hashirama say so, the fourth Reikage suddenly paused. Then, a little blush suddenly appeared on his face, like black charcoal. Surprisingly, the embarrassment in his heart couldn't be stopped. Especially with Senju Hashirama's position in the shinobi world, right now, the fourth Reikage had the feeling of being lectured. Damn it the fourth Reikage, a, eh, was secretly annoyed. If he knew the answer, he would be the first one to say it out loud. Fortunately, before Senju Hashirama could say anything more, he was sent away by the heavenly transfer technique. Giving the fourth Reikage's shame and annoyance a little relief. Swish. Senju Hashirama appeared on the moon. The ultra-high speed transmission almost broke down his whole body. Fortunately, he was now in the impure world reincarnated state. After a few seconds, Senju Hashirama recovered as usual and began to look around. Looking around at the devastated moon, Senju Hashirama was slightly stunned, then quickly realized that this was due to the moon's high speed drop. It appeared that the entire moon's surface had now been destroyed. Where could the enemy be? Senju Hashirama slightly frowned and formed seals. Sense. He slapped his hands together, shouting whatever he wanted, and the sensing technique, which was several times more powerful than Senju Taburama, was easily used. It was enough to cover the whole moon, with him as the center, spreading around it. Found them. Senju Hashirama's eyes snapped open with horror. Perceptively, there were three groups of chakra fluctuations on the moon, or rather, on the moon's surface. Not far away, the feedback he received was a huge blue mass of chakra, which represented where the countless people or things that possessed chakra were. To Senju Hashirama's uncertainty, was that above these chakra groups, there was a kind of dazzling humanoid chakra floating on the moon's surface. As if to say, it's me. The very enemy that controlled the moon. In the distance, there were three toads and a tiny human. The chakra in that little man's body was pitiful. The chakra of the three toads beside had more chakra fluctuations than his. Senju Hashirama really couldn't figure it out. What are these people doing on the moon? Do they want to die? As for the third place, it was outside the moon, and it was approaching at breakneck speed. The other side's chakra was also very strong, much stronger than himself. Senju Hashirama looked at the position of the person in three toads, and his expression fluctuated. If it were the usual case, he would have gone to the other party and driven them away, but now, they weren't Kanoha's people, and he couldn't care too much. With the movement of his body, Senju Hashirama instantly swept in that direction. At the same time, at the Moon Earth portal, Naruto and Gamabunta's Three Toads team figures appeared on the moon. Just after landing on the moon, Gamabunta's eyes squinted because of the strong winds on the moon, and he subconsciously shielded his head, letting the person and two frogs hide behind him. Is this the moon? Looking at the dusty moon along the seam of Gamabunta's wall-like webbed hands, the sky was a ruddy yellow, with sand and wind everywhere. 
From time to time, a strangely shaped meteorite crashed down from above, hitting the surface of the moon. The booming sound couldn't reach their ears. On the surface, there was nothing to see. Yuzumaki Naruto looked up, and the dark starry sky instantly filled his vision. He looked towards the future away. Further away, a beautiful blue bowl of water. It radiated a brilliant light and was exceptionally beautiful. So that's the shinobi world. Looking at the beautiful earth, Naruto instantly froze. He didn't expect the shinobi world he usually stayed in to be so beautiful. Unexpectedly, one day, he would stand on the moon overlooking the shinobi world. The guy is over there. Yamabunta used the sensing technique, pointed out Atsutsuki Tenari's direction, and immediately carried Naruto in that direction. That's... Atsutsuki Kagaya on a Chibaku Tensei made meteorite, with a diameter of less than 100 meters, looking up at the person far above, it Shihamadari jolted. Then there was an instant joy. Looking at Atsutsuki Kagaya in such a hurry, it was obvious that the other party was also going to stop the moon. After all, she was the mother of Chakra. This shinobi world was also her own. How could she let others destroy it? It seems that our enemy should be Atsutsuki Yurashiki. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.